Are there? Good. How are you guys? We're all here, I think. Okay, good. They need to speak loud. Yeah, speak loud. Remember I can hear just... all of you on TV, so you know. Okay. Please remember to state your name, and then I'll try to call on you. Um, did we get their pictures by any chance? We did not. We did. <laughs> Sorry. And I wanted your pictures up there call? when you were talking rather than me. That didn't happen. All right. Well, we're just about. Tell us whenever you're ready. Betsy. Yes. This is Misty. Can you tell us how to mute uh, when we're not speaking? Yes. Please mute mute your phones when you are not speaking. Please. We don't need to hear dogs and everybody in the background. So about ready to go. Good morning and welcome to our emergency meeting, which I'm going to call to order, the Board of County Commissioners emergency meeting of April 3rd. Um, first of all, I'd like to do a roll call um, for everyone that is on the line. I will start with Carol Whitmore. Here. Okay, Reggie Bellamy. Yes, ma'am, Madam Chair, here. Okay, Vanessa Baugh. Here. Steve, Steve Johnson. Steve Johnson, are you on the line? Okay, I guess Steve is not on the line. Maybe he'll join us. Steve, if, whenever you get here, let us know. Um, Misty Servia? Here. Priscilla Trace? Here. Okay, all right. I want to just say thank you to everybody that is here um, today. We know it's not easy to leave your home when you're being told to stay at home. So we really appreciate you all coming out here and practicing social distance. And I really want to thank our staff who's been working so incredibly hard to try to deal with this issue. None of us want to be here. None of us want to have to take on these responsibilities, but we do. And so we're going to do our job. And so I just want to say a special thank you to our staff that literally could be risking their lives by being here. So I really appreciate it. I'm going to go ahead and write, read a statement regarding um, what the purpose of this meeting is. Um, and just for all the uh, commissioners on the line, we do have um, sign language interpreter. We've been asked to speak clearly and slowly, so I'm going to try to do my best. This afternoon, the county commission will be considering emergency resolution 20-53 that would create a temporary local curfew and it would give our local law enforcement offices the ability to enforce group gathering restrictions on private property in conjunction with Governor DeSantis's Executive Order 20-91 and 20-92. If you're viewing this meeting at home, you can read the resolution at www.mymanatee.org slash COVID-19-19. That is the county's primary information resource for residents who want to know what the county is doing to prevent the spread of coronavirus. Because of the unique circumstances of the coronavirus, we are strictly observing social distancing here at the county administration building. Most of our employees are now working remotely and we have limited the number of people who have been allowed inside our chambers. Public input and involvement is a critical part of our local democracy and it helps those of us on the commission make strong, informed decisions that are in the community's best interest. So given the circumstances of this emergency meeting, we will be accepting public questions via phone call-in for the first time ever. At the bottom of your screen, you should see the call-in. You should see the call-in number, 941-745-3700. Again, I'll repeat that, 941-745-3700. 3700. From now until after the board finishes debating, we'll have call takers who will answer the lines and relay caller questions to County Administrator Corrier and to me. After the board's initial conversation, we will take 10, 15 minutes to read over questions that come into our call line. <coughs> after that period, I will come back to the board for final comments and a vote of the resolution. If we do not get around to each caller's question in the allotted time, the county will answer those questions to individuals who leave their email with us when they dial in. So I hope everyone um, will have an opportunity to get your questions answered if you don't have the opportunity today um, or, or during this meeting. We will follow up with any questions that you send us. 
So at this time, I'm going to go ahead and turn it over to the county administrator. Um, Thank you. To continue. Thank you, um, Chairman Benack and um, commissioners that are on the line. Um, we appreciate you being here today. I am going to introduce uh, Jacob Sauer, who is our public safety department director, who's going to begin um, with some information about today's subject matter. Good afternoon, Chairperson, Commissioners, uh, Mr. Palmer, County Administrator Corrier. Before speaking to the proposed resolution, I'd like to provide you with an update on the COVID-19 event and Manatee County's response efforts. Since our last update to you on Tuesday, March 24th, the virus has rapidly spread from 380,000 to over 1.2 million cases being reported around the globe. As of this morning, Manatee County has climbed to 94 local residents with positive cases and three deaths. The state of Florida has over 9,500 total cases, 8,600 being Florida residents, and over 300 non-Florida residents. And that is expected to surpass 10,000 by the end of the day. 1,167 people within the state of Florida continue to be monitored. Sadly, the death toll across Florida has risen to 144. Moving on, locally, we opened up a drive through specimen collection site at the Braden Area Convention Center March 27th through March 30th. Over those four days, we received 197 Manatee County residents who had a prescription and appointment to be tested. We are starting to see those test results come through now. However, Department of Health will be waiting until all 197 tests results are complete before producing a report of those tests. That does not mean that the, those 197 residents are not being informed as their test result, results are provided. It just means that the Department of Health is not providing a report until all results are complete. Emergency Operations Center remains at a level two activation for select emergency support function personnel until further notice, with the majority, if not all, personnel working remotely and communicating through conference calls and video chats. On March 22nd, Florida Department of Emergency Management established five objectives that as a state we are working under. Stop the introduction of COVID-19 in our community, protect the elderly and our vulnerable population, perform testing with a holistic approach, encourage social distancing through multiple forms of messaging, and prepare medical surge needs on the horizon. Considering these five objectives, Emergency Management continues their partnership with the Department of Health every day through either conference calls or community stakeholder meetings held virtually. In addition to calls multiple times a week with region partners and daily calls with the Florida Department of Emergency Management and all other counties. As of today, there have been 131 mission requests by partner organizations that have been submitted to the Emergency Operations Center. While we begin to receive deliveries on March 22nd, ongoing medical supply limitations have the potential for leading to a destabilization of the health and medical lifeline. With the help of the ESFs and many department personnel, emergency management continues to focus on work groups such as faith-based work for assistance in working with volunteers, daycare work group, feeding work group, the homeless work group, alternate care sites, vitality management, and recovery work group. As we move forward to prepare for the medical surge on the horizon, alternate care sites are being evaluated <coughs> <laughs> Hospitals are placing tents in parking lots, and the healthcare atmosphere, atmosphere in our community is starting to change. These actions are all being taken to accommodate the surge in hospital needs and to find alternate locations for recovering patients to isolate for 14 days. It's important to remember, through projections put out by the state as well as private research institutions, they indicate our community, our state, and our county will continue to feel the effects of COVID-19. A projection put out that I have been closely following that remains accurate to date projects by April 8th, the state will have over 21,000 positive cases and Manatee County will have over 300 cases. We are already halfway to that projection. The county to the north of us, Hillsborough County, currently has over 400 positive cases and five deaths related to COVID-19 now. All projections agree, Florida will see a surge of patients peaking May 2nd. I'm here to tell you, now is not the time to believe our community is immune to these numbers or this pandemic is under control. Locally, our first responders and healthcare workers are already feeling the effects of COVID-19. 
you have seen the news and the papers of healthcare workers having limited access to supplies to properly protect themselves while caring for these very sick patients. We are making doomsday plans, changing medical protocols, screening everyone, and face the possibility of rationing personal protective equipment. Within my department, public safety, our EMS team continues to deal with a large influx of suspected positive patients. All 911 calls are being treated as suspected COVID-19 patients at this time. We are finding the signs and symptoms continue, evolve, continue to evolve with COVID-19 daily. This takes a toll on our paramedics, EMTs, and first responders in many ways. Emergencies are still occurring daily on top of this global pandemic. Daily operations are still occurring. People are still having heart attacks, vehicle crashes still occur, and the normal cases we see with everyday life goes on. On the other side, first responders who come in contact with pos positive COVID-19 patients undergo various degrees of isolation. This is putting a strain on EMS, fire department, and local law enforcement personnel daily to maintain adequate levels of staffing and respond to 911 calls. We are in unprecedented times, and we will have a real problem when the virus peaks in our community. Our healthcare system and our first responders will not be able to manage the surge of sick patients. Now is the time to make swift, purposeful decisions before we reach the peak to preserve our workforce, protect our healthcare infrastructure, and protect our community. And speaking to the emergency resolution before you, as you're all aware, on March 29th, President Trump extended the social distancing guidelines to the end of April, and on April 1st, the governor issued Executive Order 2091, which limits the movement of Florida residents and their personal interactions outside of their home to only those necessary to obtain and provide essential services or conduct essential activities. Given the two recent orders, the Manatee County Policy Group met twice since then to discuss additional measures that will send a clear message to the residents and visitors of Manatee County that social distancing practices must be taken seriously. Currently, Manatee County's COVID-19 restrictions are only enforceable on public property, such as public beaches and public boat ramps. And while the public has largely heeded those restrictions, Group gatherings at private residences outside, such as vacation rental homes, as well as recreation centers and event halls, continue to pose a public health risk. Commissioners, we have reached a critical point in our local response to the COVID-19 outbreak. Already nearly 100 Manatee County residents have the coronavirus. Tragically, three have died. There are likely many more residents who have the virus or will have it later this month. I believe the time is now for our leadership to enact clear guidance to Manatee County residents. The clear message that we have the ability to send today is that social distancing orders must be taken seriously and are not to be ignored. As we lean forward, it's important that we enact measures now to save lives later. The resolution presented today, I believe, will help Manatee County flatten the curve and potentially save many lives. The proposed temporary curfew before you today would prohibit non-essential travel, travel that is not for food, medicine, essential supplies, uh, empl and employment from 10 p.m. to 5 a.m. seven days a week. If the temporary curfew is approved as part of the proposed resolution today, the curfew hours would become effective immediately. The purpose of this curfew is to assist local law enforcement in keeping people at home when they need to be. An overnight curfew will further ensure that Manatee County drivers and pedestrians are outside of their home only for serious reasons, such as commuting to or from an essential job. It's important to note that this does not, this does not enact a police state or martial law. There will be no roadblocks. You do not need papers. If you're pulled over or questioned by law enforcement during this temporary curfew, local law enforcement officers will be educating those without a valid purpose on why they should be at home. And looking through the state web EOC, Emergency Operations Center Board, over the past week, several counties or jurisdictions within those counties have enacted similar temporary curfew hours. Broward, Leon, Orange, and Osceola counties are from 11 p.m. to 5 a.m. Hillsboro, Liberty, 
in Miami-Dade counties are from 10 p.m. to 5 a.m. And Gadsden County is from 9 a.m. to 6 a.m. The goal of today's emergency resolution is to provide the Manatee County Sheriff's Office and multiple municipal police departments with the ability to issue citations to group gatherings outside on private property and anyone not in compliance with the Governor's Executive Order 2091 and 2092. Under Florida State Statutes 252.5, those who violate the State Emergency Management Act are guilty of a second degree misdemeanor and can be served a notice to appear. In conclusion, this proposed supplemental emergency resolution adds support to the White House and Governor's directive to slow the spread through April 30th and also helps our local law enforcement, the Department of Health, first responders, and the medical community protection and ability to protect our citizens in a more stringent way. As a wise woman might have said yesterday, if you thought you could save one life by being temporarily inconvenienced during this unprecedented COVID-19 event, wouldn't you want to? Um, with that, I would like to close uh, <clears throat> in thanking the policy group that's met twice this week and their continued efforts um, to work with all of our local leaders in uh, coming to conclusions on our next steps. And with that, I can take some questions. Thank you, Jake. I think we also have the sheriff on the line. If uh, Sheriff Rick Wells would like to make a statement, now would be the appropriate time. Yes, ma'am. Thank you, Madam Chair. D just let me uh, first say I, I really appreciate Jake and Sher Sherry and everything that uh, the, the group has been working so hard to do. And I, I just want to bring up a couple points here. First of all, let's just take a look at the actual executive order from the governor. And, and if you have that in front of you or if you have read it, um, it already requires all persons in Florida to limit their movements and personal interactions outside of their home to only those necessary to obtain or provide essential services or conduct essential activities. Uh, so even during the daylight hours, it's a violation, and it's a second-degree misdemeanor not to follow the orders of, of, of the governor. I would also submit to you that there is not an essential business open in Manatee County past 10 o'clock other than a convenience store. And we are not asking anyone to uh, restrict, or we're not trying to restrict their freedom. What we're saying is they need to stay at home. We're not trying to arrest anyone, and we're not trying to inconvenience anyone. But there really is no reason to be outside of your home under the guidelines already set forth by the governor uh, at, after 10 o'clock. Uh, if you want to do the essential, uh, essential activities that have already been listed uh, in the governor's order, uh, you can still do so. Walking your pets or caring for loved ones, emergencies. All we're trying to do is to make sure that we limit the amount of contact that we're having uh, with each other, and we believe that this time frame will allow us to to do that to do that without restricting uh, the rights of others. We we do ha we do not have any authority, we're, and we're not trying to arrest. And we're, even during the daytime, you know, we still have to have some reasonable suspicion or Criminal, criminal activity or some lawful basis to, to stop someone. So we're, we're not trying to do anything abnormal here. We still have that ability now, and that's how we will continue even if this curfew is passed. Thank you. Um, Rick, uh, this is Commissioner Benack. If um, you could just, because of the discussion we had in the policy committee about how this, uh, the governor's order only applies to uh, public property, in order to take any action on any private property, we would have, that's why this proposed um, resolution, is that correct? That, that, that's correct. I mean, the governor does not, uh, the, the governor's order does not allow us to um, take any action um, against uh, anyone on private property that is violating the order, 10 or more people, they would be able to do so. Uh, and we have received calls from the public. We've ha received emails from some commissioners uh, even uh, last week on what, uh, what we could do, and, and we can do nothing. Uh, if someone wants to be on private property and they want to have a party right now, they, they can do so. <laughs> and we could do nothing more than to ask them to 
uh, abide by the, the CDC guidelines, and if they chose not to, we would have no further action. Right, and, and there's no intention on your part to go into anyone's home to enforce the, the regulation? Absolutely not. Okay, well, I, I think Madam that... Madam Chairman. Uh, please state your name, who you are, so I can uh, answer. I don't know who that is. Madam Chair, uh, could we possibly Serbia, confirm, could we possibly confirm whether Commissioner uh, Johnson has joined us on the line? Steve Johnson, are you on the line? Okay, thank you. Yes, I am. I'm here. Okay, thank oh, you. Excellent. Let the record show that Commissioner Johnson is on the line. Okay, um, Ms. Steve, go ahead. Yes, thank you. I have a couple of questions, um, and maybe our sheriff is the best to answer them. Um, sheriff, have there been some problems uh, recently that has resulted in this recommendation? And if there has, can you be specific about them? I can only I can only be specific in regards to some information that we receive and complaints about people gathering at parties um, at, at outside of their residence. Okay. And what about um, private clubs like the Moose Lodge and the Elks and things like that? Has that been a problem, or are they already shut down? Well, they are, uh, to the best of my knowledge, they have shut down for the most part. They're not selling alcohol, and I don't believe that we've had any complaints from those, from okay. those type of uh, establishments. So when I heard of the different counties in the state that have imposed a curfew, I didn't hear any of our nearby counties. Is that correct? That's correct. As far as I know, Hillsborough County and Pinellas, uh, or Hillsborough County was the only one that I know of that had an actual curfew close by. Okay. So if someone wanted to, um, you know, have some sort of activity during those hours, they could just drive to Sarasota, right? <laughs> Is that what's going to happen? Because that's kind of what I fear would happen if we impose a curfew. We well, might just be pushing people to a different place. Well, l let me say this, though. Um, you're still in violation of the executive order, no matter what time of day or night it is, unless you are actually going to or from one of the uh, essential services or conducting essential activities. There's no other reason to be out, and the, the executive order is clear that you can't just be driving around Manatee or Sarasota County just because you want to. You have to be going to or from one of the essential businesses, or you have to be working, or there's an emergency that, that for some reason, you know, brings you out of your home at that time of night. Right. Okay, and I'm just interested in hearing more information because, you know, while I, I really do want to protect, you know, all of our people and our health care workers, it, it does give me pause whenever we talk about taking away our, our civil liberties, you know. So I appreciate um, hearing more information and specific examples. And, and one of the things I want to ask you about, Sheriff, um, and I sent you an email on this, is there's a business called Bingo Land, and they are still operating. And well, while I, I, I have let me, let, let me. I don't mean to cut you off. We, we've already just, we've already talked to those type of establishments. They have been ordered to shut down. As of yesterday, they they were in compliance, or said they would be in compliance. And if they're not, then we will go back out to that business and we will shut them down. And if they continue not to abide by the, the governor's executive order, then they will be ordered, or they'll be issued a notice to appear and have to appear in court. Okay. Okay, that's good to know. And Misty, if I could uh, just clarify on that on that point, because that's one of the questions, of course, I think that we all had. So a business is operating, not in conjunction with this, but it it, it appears, because that's a non-essential business, correct, that now we have some authority to tell them they need to cease operation. Is that true or false? No, that is absolutely true. The executive order has been very clear on what is essential and what is non-essential. And non-essential businesses have to close their doors 
And if they don't, we will educate them once again. And if they refuse to comply, then we would give them a notice to appear. And the reason I ask that is because Pinellas County recently adopted a resolution clarifying that they have the ability to shut down uh, non-essential businesses. And I wondered, well, okay, they felt the need to adopt um, such a resolution uh, to do so. And I, I know we'd had this discussion in the policy committee, what authority do we have if it's not on a public, um, if it's not in a public property? So I, I think that was the intent, and I can ask our attorneys, the intent of this was not just residential property, but businesses as well? Any and all private properties, Madam Chair. Okay. Regardless of the nature of use or occupancy, any and all private properties. Okay, Misty, I'll, I'll go back to you. Yeah, let me ask one more question about essential business. Because when I read the governor's order, it seems to include um, most businesses. Uh, can you tell me, can anyone tell me what is excluded? And I've had a number of emails about Hobby Lobby. Um, and some people say that is an essential business because they sell materials to make masks. And others are very upset that they are open. Is, is Hobby Lobby an, um, an essential business? <laughs> I, I can only give you my interpretation, and, and could we have had complaints as well? Uh, no, I, I, I don't believe that they are included in the governor's order as an essential business. We have a couple that are claiming to remain open because of that very point, uh, and, but that is not um, right now what I would consider under the governor's order an essential business. We will be actually reaching out to them. Uh, if we haven't already, because we've been discussing that all day, I, I really don't believe that that um, is an appropriate reason to to remain open. And, um, and until we get some clarification, either from the governor's office or someone else, they need to close their doors. And, and Misty, I'll just say, because a lot of us are getting questions about what is an essential business. And I will note the governor's order is very extensive when it comes to essential businesses. I don't feel qualified to make that interpretation unless it's super clear, so I've asked for help. Uh, Mickey, you might want to tell us about how, I mean, w this governor's order isn't something that we created, but we have to enforce it, so perhaps you could just maybe talk to that issue. Well. Uh in its simplest terms, my office is certainly happy to interpret legislation that we author. I am less than willing to interpret legislation uh, that comes, or, or in this case, executive orders that come out of the governor's office. Um, as to, you know, as to private individuals and private businesses uh, that are in need of legal advice as to whether they are deemed essential, I would urge them to seek legal counsel, private legal counsel of their choosing. Mr. Clegg, Madam Chair, Carol, if you're hold on, Carol. I got you on the list, but um, Bill Clegg had want to speak in response to that. Madam Chair, I would just like to add to that that what you're hearing from Sheriff Wells is reflective of who has the first line responsibility to enforce the governor's executive order. It is law enforcement. There's only one section of the order that is a directive to local government. So this isn't something that's going to be coming through our code enforcement system. It's going to be primarily the sheriff under Chapter 252, the Emergency Management Act, who is going to be enforcing it. And so I think, you know, he's, he's having to deal with it first. We're starting to get a lot of questions about it. I understand from Mr. Barnott he's getting a lot of He needs of to be closer to the mic. I can't hear him. You need to oh, be I'm closer. sorry. Is that better? Can you hear better, Carol? Yeah, much better. Okay. Okay. I, I do think, I, I definitely agree with Mr. Palmer, we, we should not be taking the first line and giving legal advice to people about whether they do or don't qualify as essential under the resolution. That's something they'll need to sort out with their own counsel and they'll need to work with the sheriff's office. Okay. Uh, hey, Betsy, it's Misty, and I just have just another quick question before I turn okay. it over. Okay. 
So is there a planned um, end to this proposed curfew? If it's implemented, do, do we have an end date? I believe it runs for one week. Seven-day increments. A seven-day, just like our emergency order. Seven-day increments. Madam, Madam Chair, can I also say something about essential businesses? The governor had just recent, has recently put out um, a more clarifying order on what is essential businesses, and we will work to get that um, through our county attorney's office um, for their blessing and then put it up on our website as well. But the governor has um, simplified a little bit, although it's four pages long. <laughs> <laughs> You know, it, it, it'd be nice if you give us a list of non-essential businesses. <laughs> you know, the essential Probably business. Probably little. You know? Okay. <laughs> One at a time. It's crazy. Okay. Um, Ms. Diaz, did, did that answer your question? Yes, thank you. Okay. Carol, did you have a question? Commissioner Trey, yeah, I have to speak. Go ahead, Carol. And if everyone could speak close to the mic, Jake. I, I heard you, but it's kind of hard. First of all, um, I work at an essential business. I'm here now in the medical world. So there are clear definitions. And um, unfortunately, we're here today because some aren't compliant. And that's the only reason why we're here today, and we've heard that from the sheriff. First of all, Jake, I did it at the last meeting. I want to do it at this one. Can you please tell us what your role is in this? And also, were all the policy group in concurrence with this action today? And I've got more questions. My role as the public safety director during a local state of emergency is to coordinate the policy group and the local um, community in a response to whatever, it, albeit whatever it is. Um, I work closely with the county administrator um, and through the local state of emergency, I'm sure Mr. Palmer would say something as well. Um, I'm in charge of our response to this. Um, we hold weekly policy group meetings with the sheriff, the police chiefs, and all the elected mayors, as well as the county administrator and Mr. Palmer, and the chairperson, um, Commissioner Banak. Um, in the last week, uh, the policy group met to discuss the governor's um, executive orders, and um, through different conversations, all of the members of the policy group recommended the resolution before you today. Thank you. Uh, my next comment or question also. Um, in our, in our um, resolution that you'll see, it's in seven-day increments, which I think is smart. I think what it says in it that it can be um, extended by the chair and the group. I think this is an important issue enough that this should be uh, us voting on this every seven days. I mean, it's very easy to do this teleconference. So if it's not, I would suggest uh, when we get into discussion that we take responsibility for the vote, and um, you recommend it. You bring it up. Uh, we look and see where we are, and then we vote whether we should extend it another seven days. Um, I've had, of course, um, concerns about, I got this one at 7.30 this morning. I'm sure all of you had, too, but about walking around at night, and except if you're walking dogs, you can go 250 feet. I told Sheriff I was bring this up. I don't know about any of you, but my dog require longer than 250 feet to go to the bathroom. <laughs> so, um, and, I, and I'm hearing that from everybody. I mean, can you walk around your local block? Can you walk around down the street from your block? I don't think the police are out to get you just because you're walking your dog. But most people walk their dogs before they go to bed, and that's usually between 10 and 11. So, and it's coming up the weekend. So that's something. Also, I had somebody last night ask me, well, what about... He lives in a subdivision. He walks around his block at night before he goes to bed. I'd like to know clarification before I go any further how that would pertain. Okay. As far as walking around the block, which I walk a long ways with my dog at nighttime, but usually it's before 10, but go ahead. Um, I've got a somewhat generic response. <clears throat> we could sit in this room and literally come up with thousands of potential factual scenarios. Uh, and an effort to address each and every one of those would probably result in a resolution that is hundreds of pages in length. Um, we rely upon our law enforcement officers to exercise good judgment in the field. They do it every day, 24 seven, whether to give somebody a speeding ticket or just a warning is the simplest of examples. 
it is hard for me to imagine that any law enforcement officer would issue a notice to appear to someone who's walking around their block to get exercise and who otherwise is willing to comply with the officer's orders to return home. So that is the best answer I can give. We can sit here for the rest of this day and come up and into tomorrow and come up with thousands of potential examples. We have to utilize some common sense in the field. Well, mm -hmm. and, you know, I, I thought people, I would bring these comments up, and I understand what you're saying. And I live in a city, not in the county, so hopefully my city's law enforcement will feel the same as what the sheriff's group does. Um, you know, um, I actually know in the last four days of four people that are positive. Uh, and it was kind of a joke you could see on social media. How many people do you know that are positive now? Well, in the last 48 hours, I know four now. Um, I'm still, as you all know, working really closely with the medical world, um, uh, working with them however I can to help them, and I'm staying involved with it. And um, they have been happy to see what the county has done so far. They want it more, and I, I, maybe there are people there today for that. But because they're seeing them coming into the emergency room, both hospitals have patients that are um, in the hospital as well as community people that are positive in their homes. So this is not a uh, this is not something to take lightly. Um, so I uh, our job as uh, county commissioners is budget and public safety. And to me, my my hard decision that I have to make is for the citizens of all of Manatee County. I've seen a few emails today, and maybe the attorneys or the sheriff can help me out on this. But if we do this, um, if we do this. Uh, um, thing at night, uh, we're, 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 we're um, signaling out poor people. Um, I didn't like to hear that at all. I have vacationers next door to me that party all night long, and um, so I think it's everybody. But I'd like to hear from the sheriff because I, I got like two or three emails. Somebody's gotten people to send us emails on that, and we've all gotten text messages and emails from people saying that we're we're infringing on their um, civil liberties. And so when I'm hearing people say that, I got the same text message or email. So I get it. We're all getting pressures from both sides, and that's why you're hearing the commissioners ask the questions they are. But, Sheriff, can you um, rest assured that this doesn't discriminate? Well, I think it goes without saying, Commissioner, to be honest with you. This is a, this is a, an executive order that we're trying to enforce, and, and this executive order, without a curfew, will be enforced regardless of who you are and where you live. Uh, a, a violation is a violation. I also want to say that we're not trying to arrest someone for a second-degree misdemeanor and put them in our jail, which is another location that we are trying to control uh, and, as you know, is very difficult. So we're, what we're trying to do is just to give people – the the um, the understanding and, and educate them on the importance of just staying at home and that's that's the executive order stay at home and we're, and we're not going to be driving around neighborhoods and, and trying to put people in jail uh, if you are outside walking you have the right to do that that's that's stipulated inside of the executive order um, and, and, and right now without any pandemic or without any executive order, if we saw someone walking around a neighborhood at 3 o'clock in the morning, we're going to stop and talk to them regardless, because that's what we do. We want to make sure that they are not trying to commit a crime, or, and, and we're not going to stop them, or, but we're going to talk to them. So, I, you know, this is, this is nothing more than self-compliance. Ho hopefully people will just stay at home. We, we are the carriers of this virus. We spread the virus. All we're trying to do is help out our hospitals, help out our, our, our medical personnel, limit the amount of people coming into the hospital, and we're, we're just trying to do our part. If you don't pass the curfew, I understand we're still going to be out there doing our best to, to educate people on the importance of staying at home. Okay. You done, Carol? Yeah, thank you for now. Okay. Priscilla? Yes, thank you. Uh, Sheriff, I have a quick question for you. As far as this property right, if I shoot the gun in town on my property, my backyard, would you come and arrest me? 
if you violated the law, it would be, uh, it, it would, if you could be arrested if you were in violation of the Florida statute, regardless of what so they you, were in. So technically, you, right now, if someone's breaking the law outside on their private property, you have the right to go on the private property as the law is written today. That's, that's right. That's correct. Okay. So technically, what you're saying is nothing's really changing except one law change in the sense of, unfortunately, the governor does not want 10 or more people gathering. That's, that's so correct. all you're doing is enforcing the law just like you do on every other thing. If someone was burning, you'd be arresting them because there's a burn ban. If you shoot or break the law in your backyard, you're going to get arrested if you all are there to see it. Correct? Yes, ma'am. So absolutely nothing is really changing than what we had uh, 40 minutes before we started this meeting. <laughs> Correct? Yes, yes ma'am. Thank you. Okay. Other commissioners Mr. have... Benag, Vanessa Ball, when... when Go ahead, time. Vanessa. Uh, Priscilla, great question. Thank you for those. I was wondering about the same thing. I, Sheriff, I'm glad you're still on the line, and I'm really glad that you're in this meeting. Um, let me ask you a question. I'm getting a little confused. I understand uh, exactly what you said and the need and, and what you're trying to do, and I totally, wholeheartedly agree uh, that the executive order from our governor does need to be enforced. I agree that we're at that point, that we need to do this. Um, but what I'm a little confused about is, as far, and it's two different items here, so Sheriff, it's two questions, I guess. Number one, on the curfew. Uh, the, the governor, as you said, has made it very clear that we are to stay home. We can be out at night uh, exercising, uh, you know, along those lines that the governor said, or going to a convenience store if need be. Uh, I don't know. I'm not normally out after 10 o'clock at night. I'm an old, uh, uh, older person, so I'm not there, but... Um, I would think that what we're talking about here, as Priscilla said, uh, you can already, you have the right under that executive order to do whatever necessary along those lines during, uh, you know, from 10 o'clock at night until 5 o'clock in the morning, whatever the need be. You already have the right. So I want you to help me understand why it is, uh, since we have that from the governor already for you to be able to do, why you feel that we need to, quote, unquote, uh, add a curfew uh, in Manatee when you already have that right from the governor's executive order. I'm confused on that. Can you help me with that? Well, for me, I can't speak for Jake. For me, it's just about people uh, giving them the information needed to, to just comply. Uh, and we, and unfortunately, we have a lot of people that have not taken this virus seriously. They do not care about any warnings that do not care about uh, the information that has been uh, um, put out there through the media, the president, the, the, the governor. What, what we're saying is limit the traffic. Give us the ability to at least um, limit the exposure of people in these in the, during these curfew hours and and maybe give us uh, a easier time of identifying violations, uh, you know, not everyone's going to be out at 3 o'clock in the morning violating the law. They, they may be going to work. A lot of, lot of stalkers at Publix and other locations go, go to work at 4 a.m. to stop. All we're saying is that you, you need to stay at home, and you need to take this seriously, and you can't just come out and start driving around Manatee County and uh, think that uh, you, know, you can do what you want. And so I, I, it would help us identify those that are violating. Okay. Uh, but you still have that right. I mean, by the executive order of the governor. Uh, we still have that right, yes, ma'am. We just, we yeah, just, okay. we hope, we hope that more people would comply, knowing that not only do we have the governor's order, we also have a curfew uh, to, to kind of strengthen the governor's order that you need to stay at home. And this is yeah, Jake. And, and I appreciate that, Sheriff, with what you're saying. And I, and I got to tell you, for me, I'm going to sit back and I'm going to say, oh, the governor said I better do this. So if I don't. Uh, law enforcement coming after me. I, I would be more scared of that than the county commission, but that's just me. But I see your point. And, and then on the other, uh, I guess we're going to talk, we're, now it's the time to talk about those issues, the private property. Um, you know, I, I think it was a good point that Commissioner Trace made. You already have that right because of the executive order. If you question or if you have reason to think 
that there is a party going on or whatever the case may be, you already have that right by the executive order to look at them and say, hey, just letting you know, you know, you, there's an executive order here and you can be uh, given a citation here if y'all don't break up or I'm sure that's how you would handle it initially or something. But, I mean, you already have that right. So no, really, no, you don't no. need the county giving you anything on private property. No, we do that's not have the government. right. No, ma'am, that's, that's incorrect on that part. We, the, the, the executive order only allows us to enforce public spaces. So if you have a block party on a piece of uh, property uh, out east somewhere and you want to have 50 people there and have a bonfire or whatever, we have no authority to tell you to break it up. All right, let me ask you another question that comes to mind then with that. If that's the case, uh, I mean, I remember, I'm probably going to give things away here, but sure. when I was a young lady uh, and, and uh, we used to party quite often, we'd be at one of our homes and, and the music would be real loud and, and so forth, and all of a sudden a police officer would come knocking on the door or ring the doorbell and say, hey, we're getting complaints here about loud music. Uh, can you not do that as well? Can you not say, hey, we've gotten a complaint here? Uh, you know, we have reason to think that, you know, you're having a party here and it goes against the exact... You can't approach it in that regard uh, we, initially? We, or All we can do is go there like we would any other night and tell them to turn down the music. And if they complied with that and they had 40 people outside and they complied with the loud music, then we could not tell them to break up the party because they violated CDC guidelines. Okay, so my last question on this, and thank you, Sheriff, just trying to get a good idea here. No, I'll have other questions later, but the next question is, if you're at that, yeah, say you go to this party, and you're seeing, uh, you can tell there's more people there than should be. That executive order doesn't say anything about uh, people more than 10. Uh, it specifically says in public uh, uh, facilities or something along that line, pu uh, public property, uh, you can only do that. Because I don't right. remember uh, uh, reading that in the order. That's why I'm asking. Yes, yeah, the order is very specific. Public spaces only. Okay. That, thank you, Sheriff. That's all I have for right now. Okay, Jake, I know you wanted to respond to Vanessa. Yeah, and, we, and we've since moved on. I, I do agree with the sheriff um, in, in what he said. Um, it does give the, the deputies, law enforcement, and health care workers a time to breathe, that curfew. Um, it, we hope by uh, the message of a curfew it gets across that they should be at home and that the people that are out after those hours have a true purpose to move about the county. It gives um, the health care workers and law enforcement less interaction and... Um, hopefully allows us to slow the spread of the virus. Okay. Um, at this time, I'm going to take a uh, five-minute break to give our interpreters and our clerk a break. We'll be back in five minutes. Um, if you guys have more uh, questions, let me know. We're going to be reading from, we're going to hear from the public that is here and has signed up to speak, as well as the emails that we've received. We're going to try to answer those questions. But to give our folks that are working so hard and doing the uh, signing, we're going to give them a little break here, five minutes, okay?
uh, they're, they stay away from each other when they're playing. I've watched them time and time again. You guys are all on, on live. We're going to um, okay. we're gonna go back in session. All right. Um, we've got uh, some people signed up to speak, and then we'll start with the questions. I'm going to start with uh, Dr. Stephanie Minter from uh, uh, Manatee Memorial Health, I assume, hospital. If you want to come down to the microphone, just state your name for the record. And um, we be glad to hear from you. Uh, yes, can you hear me? No. Yes. Can you hear me okay? Can you hear me now? Yes. yes. Very good. All right. Well, first, um, thank you for allowing us to come and speak. I am Dr. Stephanie Minter, Chief Resident for Internal Medicine over at Manatee Memorial Hospital. Um, I first want to start by saying that nothing is more essential than your health. Um, and we both stand in unenviable positions you deciding as to uh, certain resolutions and proposals that may uh, limit the activities in your community, and us deciding to allocate resources that may limit access to certain uh, levels of care. So um, let me say on behalf of all of us that the rapid progression of this condition is what is most concerning for us. And yes, we do know that there are many people in the community who carry the virus asymptomatic, which means they don't have the cough, they don't have the shortness of breath, and they don't have the fever. Um, it's, it's these concerns that we have about silent spread that we offer our support in any way that we can to help you as commissioners um, guide and lead by example the people in your community. Um, so that's kind of all we ask is that we continue to support each other in being somewhat paternalistic for the people that have elected us to be in this position and for the people that we swore to protect. Um, that's, our, that's our statement. Thank you. Thank you. Would you like to speak also? Please just state your name. Yes. Uh, my name is Dr. Werder Marciales. I'm an internist in town. I have been here for several 20 plus years, and um, I'm also the program director of the internal medicine residency at Manatee Memorial Hospital. We have been actually um, uh, very concerned about the progression of this disease. We have seen what has happened in different uh, uh, countries and different models, and uh, we, when we do a parallel uh, 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 comparison of what the population in Italy and the, the population that we have in Manatee County, we're very concerned because we have a, a, our a, a population of 400,000, approximately 400,000 people, 27% are about the age of 65, and this is the group in which is more affected for this condition. We have 13 nursing homes with 1,500 residents, and uh, the, um, uh, the possibility of this being a catastrophe is not to be taken lightly. I believe that anything that we can do to prevent this, it should be done because we are here to protect the right of the people to be healthy. And that is the right that we, I think that is more important for us as healthcare providers because um, I, I have the feeling that every time that I could go home, I have to separate from my, my father, who's 90 years old, recently was sick. I have not been uh, in contact with my kids, who I haven't been able to embrace them for two weeks, because it is, it is for sure that I am a person who are in contact with patients, probably at high risk to transmit this disease to other people. And what people need to understand is they may not be the ones who even, they get sick but they are the ones who may be bringing that disease to the loved ones. And how can you live when you know that unfortunately, you, a healthy individual, do not get sick, but then your mother, your father, your grandfather, your immunosuppressed friend, you brought that and you are the vector of their demise. So those are the concerns that we have, and I believe that their, um, right to protect themselves should take over some of the uh, common sense rules, which has been already established in, in, um, 
in other uh, areas as a measure to reduce the spread of the disease. One of them, for example, uh, in, uh, there was a book uh, uh, in which they see what is the best strategies and, they, and the communities that adopted very restrictive uh, rules are the ones who fare the best. So uh, I think that if the question that all of us need to ask ourselves is, have we done enough? Have we done enough to prevent death? And when this happens, instead of regretting, oh, we wish we would have done this, that we do it before that happens. Thank you. Thank you so much for being here, and thank you for your service. I know you all are very busy nowadays. All right, next up I would hear from Kevin Wright. I'd like to come down and just state your name for the record, please. Thank you. My name is Kevin Rice, citizen of Manatee County. Uh, government's fundamental purpose is to secure our liberties. Taking care of the public health and welfare is a means to that end. Rousseau, Montesquieu, John Locke, the founding fathers, they all understood this. And if for any one of the commissioners to vote for any part of this aspect of this resolution is a demonstration that you do not understand what the founders and what the shoulders upon which they stood, uh, what they meant by that, the fundamental purpose of government. I stand in opposition to this resolution in any aspect of it. Part of it's arbitrary. The curfew is arbitrary, as much of this is. As you walk around, we had people walking with each other. Thinking, some people wore a mask, some are not. It's a, it's a little bit of a side. Some of this is government trying to say, we want to tell folks, we're doing something. We're doing something. And that's not good enough. A curfew. We could achieve the same purpose by saying, okay, from noon uh, to 8 o'clock or noon to 5 o'clock during the day, you cannot do this. The only difference is at night, it's a little bit harder to see somebody walking around. Uh, not all behavior, especially good behavior, is supposed to, should be subject to the law. Riding my bicycle or walking with my wife uh, any time of the day, I, up until now, was not bad behavior. In fact, it was seen as good behavior. And now it is uh, a misdemeanor, or is prospected to be a misdemeanor. There is a red line which you cannot cross as an elected official. And of course, the choice is there on elections. Most of the county commissioners are carrying and running either this year or next year for election under the banner of a party whose fundamental, one of its fundamental principles is constitutionally limited government, constitutionally limited government. Any county commissioner that votes for any aspect of this does not understand constitutionally uh, limited government, is just standing against that, and I will do everything within my power as a citizen and try to enroll others that even if everything else you've done heretofore is good, this is a red line. It's a red line that you may not cross, and if you cross it, Everything within the power of the citizens and everybody else that we can muster, you will not be reelected re -elected this year or next year when you stand for election. Thank you. Thank you. Next up is Kenneth Piper. Uh, good afternoon, commissioners. My name is Ken Piper, and I'm here today as an individual and not as a member of any organization that I may be a part of. Uh, the statement was made here earlier today that uh, no one wants to violate anyone's rights. Well, in fact, that's exactly what you're doing. You are violating people's rights. The question is whether or not you can validly do that. Now, when I said you're violating people's rights, the Fourth Amendment uh, gives people the right to be secure in their houses and papers. So your resolution proposes extending this from private from public spaces to private property. The sheriff says that um, um, it, this will not apply to the area, or it will not apply inside your home. It will only apply to the area outside. But that is not what uh, uh, the resolution says. It says private property. So if there's a loud party going on, um, 
inside your home and your neighbors don't like it, they're definitely going to call the sheriff. He's going to show up. And then we say, Okay, Sheriff Wells said in the commissioner's meeting that he wouldn't enforce any violation as long as it was inside your house. Well, I don't think uh, we should rely on that. I think you need to clarify the, the resolution, at least for those uh, purposes. Now, I really don't understand what the basis for the commissioner's order is. Uh, the governor's order 20-91 applies only to public spaces. And public spaces is defined in uh, Florida Statute 876.11. Uh, the term public space includes all walks, alleys, streets, boulevards, avenues, lanes, roads, highways, and other ways or thoroughfares dedicated to the public use or owned or maintained by public authority. And all grounds and buildings owned, leased by, operated, or maintained by public authority. So that clearly does not include your house. And that's what the governor's uh, order applied to. Then in 2092, his order 2092, he says that, um, or in, in order 2092, he says that order 2091 supersi supersedes any conflicting local ordinances. Well, I would think if you're applying this to private property, you're definitely in conflict with the governor's order, and I don't think you have the basis to do that. Um, as far as the curfew is concerned, I guess I don't understand what has changed. Now, we, now the sheriff says he, he has the right to stop anybody anyway. Okay, fine. So if he has that right, what does the curfew add to that? Um, now, I don't understand how the sheriff establishes probable cause for a stop of a vehicle going down the road. It's not weaving. It looks like it's in compliance with the law. There's no lights out on the back. Uh, both lights are on in front. Um, there's no probable cause for something like that, and I don't think the, that this uh, curfew adds anything to it. Thank you. Thank you. Um, is there anyone else who would like to address the board in this public session? Okay, all right. Well, before we get to the uh, written questions, um, I would like to ask Jake, um, because it is a question that I have, and I think I've heard it here today on the curfew. So um, the curfew, what does it add? It was something that you alluded to, and I, I would like to, maybe it's something that I hadn't really thought about, was the idea that a curfew could give our emergency responders a break. Well, it, is that factual? Is that one of the reasons why you are in support of the curfew? There's a couple reasons for that. So, um, yes, <laughs> it does give them a break. Um, like the sheriff has spoke earlier, um, that it's just one layer that needs to be off the road, needs to be away from home or, or at home. We, we need to be able to, de to determine um, and get the message out that you, sh you shouldn't be out. Um, and secondly, our law enforcement officers, our first responders and healthcare workers, as these people traverse throughout the community, um, that they're spreading it, like uh, many of the physicians have said, like I said earlier. Um, and now that the time is, it, it's a time for us to rest from 10 a.m. to 5 a.m. You need to be within your home. There's nothing open. They shouldn't be out. Uh, that's my personal opinion. But uh, when you talk about a curfew from 10 p.m. to 5 a.m., um, that gives our healthcare workers um, our law enforcement officers that are still out protecting the citizens, time to take a break, not expose themselves to other individuals because they're going to be out in public and, and going about whatever business they think that they may be doing. Okay. Um, also, uh, the 2092 question has been raised repeatedly, and I heard the governor clarify, and so I was totally clear on what 2092 was, the county attorney had given us his opinion in our policy committee that we could be more strict than the governor. The governor said exactly the same thing, that that was the intent. But I'm going to ask the attorney to respond to that question. Thank you, Madam Chair. Um, yes, generally speaking, local governments are, uh, are allowed to adopt restrictions that are more... Uh, Speak up, Nikki. Directly into the mic, please. Local governments are allowed to, uh, that's usually not a problem for me. Wow. Um, 
Local governments are allowed, this is well-established Florida law, uh, the courts have spoken on this issue on numerous occasions. Local governments can enact restrictions that are more restrictive than state law, or in this instance, a governor's executive order. We cannot, we cannot enact regulations that are in conflict with state law, but we can enact regulations that are more strict than state law. Um, and, and, that, and, and, and so the governor's executive order number 92 did nothing more than confirm uh, the long-standing uh, state of Florida law. And uh, as the author of this particular document, uh, it is my uh, legal opinion that there is nothing in this document uh, that is in conflict with the governor's executive order. Yeah, and the, and the governor even gave an example in his um, press conference yesterday saying that where the, the executive order says that parks are, it will be, well, not, I don't know if it was parks, but he said recreational facilities could be open. But he specifically said if the local government wanted to close a particular pathway, they could do it. So I, I felt I understood um, what he was saying. Jake, you wanted to respond to that? Yeah, and just to add, um, Daily, I'm on a, a statewide emergency operations phone call. Um, occasionally, the governor joins that phone call, but at the uh, minimum, the deputy or the director of emergency management joins that call with all 67 counties' directors. That has been um, quite the topic in the last uh, two days since the governor's 2091-2092 um, order. Um, I can tell you, more than not, every county felt like it should have been more restrictive in nature. And they have clarified with the director of emergency management and with the governor that that what Mr. Palmer told you is correct. Okay. Um, we don't have any other questions here. We're going to go to the questions. Um, um, I'm sorry. Who's that? Commissioner Benack, Vanessa Barr, I do have one thing I'd like to ask. Okay. Go ahead, Vanessa. Okay. Um, with what I with what I've been sitting here hearing uh, from from the county attorney and and Jake, I get it. I I know you guys have just been unbelievable with what all you've been doing, but I I have to ask a question. Most of what I've been hearing is why we we can do this curfew, uh, but I think what I need to be hearing, I don't need to hear why we can do it. I, I'd rather hear why we should, and and I really haven't heard where right now, you know, how how much traffic is out on the road between ten and five? Has has there been issues? Has there been problems? <laughs> I'm going to let Jake take the lead that. on answering that, and I may well, supplement his. I'm remarks. not I'm not done yet. My apologies. You took a breath there, and I'm That's I'm sorry. Okay. I thought you were done. No, I'm busy coughing. Um, Great. I guess my question, I know, I, I was waiting for somebody to say something about that. Um, you know, I, I'm not quite understanding. I'm hearing why we can do it, but I really haven't heard a lot about why we really need the curfew. What issues have been going on? Okay, Mickey. Okay. Well, I think, I think Jake, you said it's going to go initially. first. And, then, and the sheriff is also on the line still, right, Sheriff uh, Wells? And put me on a list. I'm here. Okay, good, because you might want to weigh in on that question. Uh, I think it is a question a lot of people have had. Okay. Go ahead, Jake. Um, I, th yeah. I, I thought I was clear earlier. Um, let, me, let me continue to reinstate it. Um, I do believe that with a curfew, um, the public should know they should not be out on the roadways, even today, right now. As I drove here to this meeting, it looks like a normal day. Um, and what I want to get the message across to those um, in the audience, um, listening, um, we are at a critical point to flatten the curve for exposures to COVID-19. A curfew only assists us in doing that. I am very worried that as law enforcement continues their journey through this with our first responders, they will become exposed to this virus. As that occurs, that is occurring right now in EMS, the workforce will continue to drop. And at some point we have to have a conversation about 
um, limiting the workforce and the county government and how that operates as more people become exposed and quarantined. The curfew speaks to a time when um, you should be at home. You should be at home. There's nothing for you to do from 10 p.m. to 5 a.m. And it allows those who have to continue to work to not be worried about dealing with more people uh, throughout the county. Mr. Palmer? Uh, yeah, that, that pretty much mirrors what I was going to say. It, you know, the, the, the curfew will serve to dramatically decrease the number of people that are out and about in public spaces and in outdoor areas on private properties, thus, thus uh, reducing, uh, there's the potential to substantially reduce uh, the amount of interaction between uh, people and thus substantially reduce the spread of the virus. And Sheriff Wells, I wanted to give you the opportunity as well to respond. I think uh, Jake and, and Mickey covered it. I, I think the important thing for everyone to remember is that uh, as we continue to have exposures, even if uh, we have a deputy that has not tested positive, uh, we still have to quarantine um, these deputies for 14 days, and we ha we've had to do that already. And, and so that's, that's a, uh, an impact on staffing, which means that we have to you know, try to pull from within the ranks to cover their shifts. So, you know, 14 days in law enforcement or EMS, that's a long time to have a, a deputy or a paramedic that's uh, not on his or her regular shift. And I also want to clarify something that the gentleman stated earlier about our right to pull people over. He's absolutely right, and I want to make it clear. There's no independent authority to detain anyone to see if they are obtaining or providing uh, an essential service or engaging in an essential activity. So we're not, we're not able to detain someone on reasonable suspicion of uh, only for criminal activity or for you know, some other lawful basis. So we're not, we don't have the authority to stop and detain uh, just because of the order, and we're not doing that. Okay. Commissioners, did you have anything else? Or am I going to go to the question? I did. Carol, go ahead. Ms. Serbia. Yeah, okay. Um, okay. Friday, this is Friday night. Why should we have this um, curfew? Friday night, hospital, emergency rooms, what do you think they do all night? They don't sit there. That's when they're the busiest. Um, I'm just listed some of the stuff, strokes, car accidents, overdoses, um, medical issues, heart attacks. Okay, then you got your EMS and you got your sheriff. And Jake, I don't know if you're willing to answer this or not. How many of your um, EMS and sheriff, how many of your um, um, uh, employees are self-quarantined because they've been exposed? And then I have another question. So for EMS, we have uh, three, th I'm sorry, four that are quarantined at the highest level, meaning they are not allowed to interact with the public or the workforce. Um, we have almost, I want to say up to 21, 22 others that are on a, a different degree of quarantine as we wait for tests to come back and they're wearing masks, um, but still able to work. And we do that because uh, paramedics in Florida as well as EMTs are at a premium right now. There's not enough of them. Um, as far and, and I can speak for our ends as, and, and anyone else uh, in the healthcare field, there's not enough of them to go through uh, a virus like this um, and us to continue the level of service that we do. Okay. Okay. And this, this, yes, I, I yes, yeah, we, yes, yes uh, Commissioner, we've had a total of nine already that have had full um, self quarantine restrictions in place. Um, We've had four of them come back, and then we had to place two more on self-quarantine on, on Tuesday because they have come in contact with someone that uh, may possibly have the virus. So it, it, uh, it changes every day depending on uh, who my deputy comes in contact with within a 12-hour you know, shift. Okay, and so you're, you're hearing, and uh, you just... Uh, Imagine it's going to double tomorrow, and I, I heard people come up and say that this is our right, and if you do this, 
you're not going to be in office or you won't be support. Come on, guys. I'm sorry. I've been a nurse since 77. This is public safety. This is what my job is. And if the citizens aren't going to comply, that's why we're here today. Because you're seeing this major increase. It may not be major to you. Maybe 90 people aren't major to everybody. But look at it proliferating through our EMS and our sheriffs. Look what's going on in the public. I know four people in the last 48 hours that are positive. Some are in the hospital, some aren't. This is a public safety issue. And, I, you know, I, I am going to stick up for public safety for anything else, and I'm totally going to support this. Okay, Misty? Yes, thank you. I have a couple of other questions. Can someone please clarify what the governor's order says in regards to um, religious services? Yes, Sheriff Wells. Basically, um, the, the governor has made it clear uh, that religious institutions will be allowed to conduct services if they feel the need to at, at their churches. And uh, there's nothing that prohibits them in the governor's order from doing so. Okay. So County Attorney, that is not County County Attorney agrees with that analysis. Misty, I'm sorry. Go ahead. Go ahead, Misty. I think. So that's not a place where law enforcement would enter um, a property where a church was to break up any sort of group activity. Is no, that absolutely true? not. Essential activities, essential activities that the governor has stated for attending religious services in churches, synagogues, and houses of worship. Okay. All right, great. I just wanted to have that clarified. Thank you. I also have a question about um, shopping at Walmart and Sam's, um, which I have been to both in the last couple of weeks, and there are a lot of people there definitely not six feet apart. Would this, um, or does the governor's ordinance give you the ability, Sheriff, to go inside of those businesses and ask people to social distance? The governor's order states that, that customers shall practice social distancing as advised by CDC when they're in this location. And we don't have the manpower or the authority to go in there to every Walmart, Publix, Winn-Dixie, wherever, and make sure people are six feet apart. That, that should be self-policed by, the, by the, the staff of each business. And a lot of them are doing so, but, uh, you know, some of them, as you know, are not. Right. I understand your limited resources. And what about golf courses? Can you um, tell me if we've had any problems on the golf courses? I heard have Vanessa say there were no problems. Let me have okay. Sherry answer that. Um, I think I don't think the sheriff, unless you've been out playing lately, sheriff. I don't know, but um, no, ma'am, no, ma'am. I wish, I wish, but no, I have not. I know that was a joke. Sorry, um, Sherry. You want to go ahead? <laughs> the two public golf courses that the county's in charge have have gone to single cart, and they practice distancing. Also, they have um, made arrangements for people cannot put their hands down into the cup to pick up the ball. They're putting um, uh, styrofoam or things down there so that they're not doing that. Uh, private clubs, we would also be just issuing the proper social distancing and asking them to operate in the same manner. It would then, I think, the sheriff would then have to answer if he would have to take any action if they were not. And the city of Bradenton closed down their course. Okay. And, and then finally, I just want to make a few comments um, in regard to the gentleman who spoke about um, our civil liberties, because that means a lot to me. Um, I want to make sure that everyone's civil liberties are protected, and I understand our Constitution very well, and I hold it in the highest regard. But I think we could argue that COVID-19 has already led to some restraints on our liberties. When you think about the travel ban and the quarantine, um, and I also remember from studying Constitution and the constitutional law is that the government has ample opportunities or legal authorities to impose steps in an emergency. I do believe that's true, and maybe Mickey can comment on that. Um, 
you know, I I think that liberty depends on amount of prop, uh, having a proper amount of security as well during a crisis because we don't have the constitutional right to complete freedom if we're infringing on others, you know. So I think that those are some things that have to be considered as well. And imposing any type of curfew from me is going to be done with a great deal of thought and not lightly. So I'm still thinking through this as I listen to all of you. Thank you. All right. Any other? Madam uh, Chair. Uh, Carol. Steve would like yeah. to have a comment. I'm sorry, Steve. I didn't hear you. I will let Steve go first since Carol has already spoken twice. So go ahead, Steve. <laughs> And Reggie, Steve first, then Reggie, then we'll go back to Carol. Okay, you know, I, you know, I'm listening to this. Uh, you know, it appears to me that you know the government's governor's executive uh, uh, you know uh, proclamation has given us all the stuff we need to do in the county. I think you know, as far as you know, the 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 this this uh, you know. Curfew thing is is just something. It's taking away private citizens' rights. You know, I mean, listening to Sheriff Wells, you know, he, you know, if, if they get out of line, he can pull pull them back into line. You know, from 10 a.m. 10 p.m. To, to 5 a.m. You know, trying to get people off the road. To me, the roads seem like you know they're pretty empty at this point. Um, you know, it, it, it's, um, you know, I, I just, I think we have the power from the governor's order to do what we need to do to get this dreadful situation under control. I think most people have to be responsible, stay at home, shelter at home. If they aren't, people are going to be irresponsible. I'm sorry. You know, that's just a fact of life. Some people, you know, are just irresponsible people that will go out there and do stuff and, will have to suffer the consequences of their actions. You know, we can't, I don't think, you know, at least personally, you know, I'm not going to police people's personal lives, I guess, is, is what I'm saying. And I just think we're, you know, I just think this is a bad idea. And, you know, I mean, the whole thing, and, and it's totally unenforceable, in my opinion. And, you know, Sheriff Wells, I respect you, as you know, but, you know, God bless, how are you ever going to enforce this? The court system is shut down. You know, they're not going to be doing trials now. They're talking until August or September at the earliest. You're going to arrest people or give them citations. Angels pretty much shut down the courthouse or the circuit, you know, the clerk's office. Um, you know, this whole thing is just going to be a, you know, it's something that is a meaningless thing, in my opinion, because it's not going to ever be able to be really enforced and, and you know, get us to where we want to be. People got to take care of their own self, lock themselves in, you know, and, you know, wash their hands, do whatever the CDC says we need to do. But, you know, for us to try to, as a government, tell people what they need to do, I'm just totally against that. So okay. those are my comments. Thank you. Reggie? Yes, I want to get back, obviously, um, to, the, to the religious groups, and this could be to um, Mickey or the sheriff or both, if, if they don't mind. Um, when you're talking about church, that's one thing, but a lot of church organizations have outreach ministries, and sometimes the outreach ministries obviously deal with feeding the hungry, for example. Um, can you all please address that? So, Because I've had two or three pastors that have reached out to me um, with concerns on this. I understand that it's considered essential as far as the religious church service, but when you're talking about the outreach ministry of feeding the community, can we please have an interpretation on that? And I have another comment after that, please. I think that's an essential service to feed people. And it talks about that, I believe, in the governor's order, that that is an essential service. I don't have the whole list in front of me, but I don't think there's any, and I'm looking at Mickey, 
because he might have the whole list in front no. of him, but I'm pretty sure feeding the hungry, and Bill Clegg, you got an answer there? I do. That is one of the essential services that's listed in one of the attachments incorporated in the governor's order. It is businesses that provide food, shelter, social services, and other necessities of life for economically disadvantaged or otherwise needy individuals. So I think it's reasonable that that would include also a church that's providing those services. Could you hear that, Reggie? Oh, no, ma'am. And I interpret it the same way, uh, Mr. Clegg, but I wanted it out for the record for the pastors or individuals at the community that are reaching out to us with that particular specific concern as far as their outreach ministries. And the other comment that I have about um, civil liberties, um, to be honest with you, and I don't try to go back and forth, but when we're talking about public safety, um, that falls up under the good of the community. And I think right now where we are, there's a lot of comments going back and forth, and that's not really what I'm going to get into. More importantly, let's hear everything so we can make this informed decision for public safety. And I have another comment for the end, Madam Chair. Go ahead. Do you want to make your comment now? No, ma'am. Okay. You want to hold on to the end? All right. Yes. Um, back to you, Carol. Then we're going to move on to some of the questions unless somebody else yells yeah. out. Um, number five in the resolution, again, I want to bring that up again. I don't think it should be the chair, the vice chair, automatically extending it. I have no problem either um, um, making it maybe even five days, but I, I don't think, I think that we really, the board should meet. If we're going to, if this does get passed, the board should be making the decision and not um, just like what we're doing, extending our state of emergency. That's how I feel, and I still support it. I have no problems decreasing it, but we got the weekend coming up, and just like you heard from the public safety director and the sheriff, we have staff that stretched, and um, maybe we could reevaluate it at the middle of next week or Monday even just to see how things went. we got to have our staff there. we got to have EMS answering the calls. we got to have the sheriff. And if this is the way to do it, then this is the way to do it. But, again, I would like somebody to address that because I don't think it should be automatically renewed like our state of emergency. I think we should be more, have more input. The commissioner should have more input. It, it's uh, Commissioner Whitmore, Mickey Palmer here. It's not an automatic renewal. The language requires the chairwoman to confer with the director of public safety and make a determination as to whether – the provisions of this resolution need to remain in place for another seven days. And it operates I in seven days. Yeah, it operates I in seven days. Yep, I understand. And that's what we're doing for our state of emergency or a declaration of emergency now. I understand that. But this, putting a curfew to me, is more restrictive to our citizens of 400,000 people. And I think it should be treated a little bit differently. I'm sorry, staff, but I do feel that way. Okay, um, anyone else out there that want to make a comment before we try to answer some of these questions? Yes, Bill Clegg. Uh, I'm sorry, I just wanted to make one point of clarification so the board understands. That there was a discussion about social distancing and whether or not the sheriff could go into stores and enforce that. In the governor's executive order, there's really only one place where social distancing is mandated, and that's in the statement about recreational activities being an essential activity. Otherwise, it's silent on it. So it does not provide a mechanism to make people stand six feet apart except when they are recreating. It's very, these orders are a challenging read. They're not an easy thing to grasp. There's a lot of detail in them. So I just don't want the board to misunderstand how that works when you're making your decision. Yeah, and I, 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 I'm just going to make a couple of comments. One, um, obviously, none of us have ever been in this position before. Um, you know, I, when, I, when I ran for a county commissioner, I didn't actually consider it to be a life or death job where we'd be making life or death decisions. I know some people feel that way when we have a land use meeting, but the reality is that's not true. We've not been asked to, in fact, weigh in on life or death decisions, but that's what we're doing today. So I take this extremely seriously when we're asked to make decisions for the public health. I do not do this in a political manner in any way. And the idea that somehow we're trampling on people's rights, you betcha. And are we scaring people? You betcha. We want people to be scared. We want them to stay home. I have relatives that 
I don't think are taking this seriously enough, honestly. So the, what weighs on me is what is the best way to implement this? The president has asked us to do this. President Donald Trump has asked us to do this. I believe that. Do what? I do not think that we are doing something out of, it, it, somebody said to me, well, you you're just want to take control. I want to make sure that we are doing everything we can in Manatee County to lower the curve. That's why I give great deference to our public safety officials. I listen in the policy meetings. We're not doing this on our own. We're listening to all of the mayors. We're listening all, all of, everybody in the county, all of the municipalities says, have asked us to do this. I really think the idea of a curfew, I, I didn't understand it, but when I hear from Jake that it's important to give our, um, our first responders, and I hear from the sheriff to give our first responders the ability to be able to do the things they have to do without dealing with a lot of people on the streets. I get that, because a lot of people do go out on the streets. We know that in our community after hours. I wish they didn't. So I'm, you know, I, I, I understand who, who elected me. I understand exactly how they feel about civil liberties, about the Constitution. But the reality is we are in a crisis, something that we've never been in before. So. I can't make canned decisions because of what I know from my background. I have to be able to react to the situation we're in. So I'm going to go ahead um, and ask if we Madam can. Madam Chair, I have a comment when you're finished, please. Sure. Um, go ahead, Vanessa, and then we're going to read the, some of the questions. Because I know you Yeah, just a, a, a couple of comments on what you just said, uh, Madam Chair. Um, you know, first of all, I, I disagree with you. Donald Trump, our president, did not ask us to look at having a curfew, nor did he ask us to take on the idea of perhaps stepping on our private property issues in this county. So that didn't come from our president. Our governor, uh, the order, the executive order that we are under at this time, Really, uh, I think it's a good order. I think that, you know, I've heard the sheriff uh, and Jake say, uh, um, who I respect just more so than I can even describe, uh, you know, that basically what they're asking for, and I, I think I understand the reason they're asking for this, is because they're thinking that, you know, their people are tired and, and it would behoove them and help them to get a little bit of a break which I can understand, but I don't think uh, that the curfew uh, in any way is an advantage uh, over the executive order uh, that has been granted by our governor. Uh, you know, the sheriff's office still has the same ability to do what he needs to do in that regard under the executive order, so I don't think the curfew is touching that. And the other thing I would say is that it's my understanding, and, and perhaps maybe I'm wrong, um, but... It's my understanding that uh, the calls to EMS, you know, are actually down right now, uh, which I'm glad to hear. And, and you know, we do know that 60% of the cases uh, of, this, of this horrible virus that we're having to deal with today, most of it is in two counties in, in uh, our state. Um, you know, we have a population of 400,000. Yes, we've seen a little bit of a spike, but I can tell you, that the majority of the hospitals, uh, the companies, uh, do not feel that we're going to see a spike here in Manatee, or not in Manatee, but in Florida. I hope that's correct. Uh, you know, but it's not something that I think we need to get, you know, we need to keep perspective, I guess, is what I'm trying to say. So for me to hear that, you know, our hospitals are only at 50% capacity right now, they are ready for whatever might come their way. Do I want to see that? No. Am I prepared to do whatever I need to do to take care of, of my county? You damn right I am. And I've always been prepared. But you know what? We have 400,000 residents. And we haven't heard from all of them. Yes, we've heard from the mayors. Yes, uh, uh, Madam Chair, I appreciate the fact that you represent us on this policy group. But, you know, we're hearing from residents. 
and we need to take them into consideration because right now they're having a hard time. They've already given up a lot. They're already closing their businesses. They're already having to stay at home. They're already worried about their families. They have a lot that they're concerned about. So I take this seriously, and I understand, but I do not think it's fair to say that our president or our governor has asked us to set this curfew or to give the sheriff rights when it comes to private property. So I just want to make sure that we keep things in perspective, because I, I don't know that that's what I just heard. Let's not... Let's stay in perspective here. That's all I'm asking. Thank you. Well, I'll go ahead and reply, and then I'll let the staff reply. I want to be perfectly clear. When I said the president has asked us, he has asked us to stay home. He has asked us to social distance. He has asked us to follow all of the guidelines. The governor said very clearly that his order was baseline. He said it. I watched him say it yesterday on TV. You can watch it again if you want. He said it's a baseline, and if local governments want to do more to enforce it, that's why St. Pete just adopted a resolution to go beyond it. That's why the other ones that have been adopted prior to uh, the governors are still in place. They can enforce stronger regulations. The governor also said he wants this to be done, that he wants us to stay at home. This is, from my perspective, that's the reason that we're doing it. So I want to be perfectly clear. That's why I said what I did. I'm not quoting anyone verbatim. I'm saying that that was the intent of what the president says and what the governor said. And I do believe that. So I'm not going to back off on that. Jake, you want to go ahead and respond and then Bill Clay. I can add a, a couple of other things um, to um, what Commissioner Ball had discussed earlier. Um, I said earlier in uh, in my opening statement, um, and so I, I want to clarify it a little bit more. Um, we, on average, deal with 100 COVID-19 calls a day. Um, and that is um, the sick that are calling 911 to get uh, further care through the EMS system. Each call that we run on takes approximately two hours to complete. Um, the reason for that is um, donning and doffing the proper PPE and then decontamination of the ambulance and everything else that that patient has touched or we use to care for them. Um, uh, at, at night and on the weekends, other medical emergencies still occur. And uh, when I talk about that, I mainly talk about trauma. Trauma alerts, um, people injured in vehicle accidents. Um, so that is still occurring every day and every night. Thank you, Bill. Um, these orders can really give one a headache trying to read them. So I'm, I have to qualify the statement that I made a moment ago because there is a separate order attached to the governor's order um, that does require social distancing within essential services but not within essential activities other than recreation. So this kind of illustrates why this is such a difficult thing to figure out and to apply. It is a challenge, so I, I do apologize. I just want to make sure the record is correct. Thank you. Sherry? Chair Carroll. Commissioner Benack, thank you. Um, I want to add some final thoughts to some of the reasonings behind why um, Mr. Sauer, myself, and the others are here today asking for consideration of these. On Monday of this week, we had 39 positive tests in Manatee County. Today, we have 94 an increase of 55 in five days. None of those are non-residents. So these are our own citizens. We had 13 hospitalizations, and today we have 21. We had one death, and today we had three. At this pace, just looking at an average, as we sit here uh, in a week from now, we would ex potentially ex exceed 150 positive tests over 28 more in the hospital, and potentially up to eight deaths. We want to let everyone know that it's our job to look at the before, the during, and after, and to provide you with as much knowledge as we can. Okay, thank you. Um, can we go ahead and go into some of these questions? Because we got to debate this, and so I... Um, let's go ahead and get started on some of these questions. Betsy, after the questions, I'd like to say something, Commissioner Trace. After the questions, though. All right. And me, too. 
I was already on, I think, but yeah. All right. Well, I, I think I can I think I can go through some of these and probably answer them pretty quickly if that's okay. Go right ahead. All right. If the curfew is implemented, do we know what the curfew hours will be? Right now it's suggested to be 10 p.m. to 5 a.m. How are they going to enforce it, curfew? Travel outside of those hours? Um, I think that the enforcement, the sheriff did specifically state that he would probably stop someone, ask what their business is, why are they out after curfew? Sheriff, are you still on? Do you want to expand on that? Yeah, I'm, I'm still here, Commissioner. Ba basically, like I said earlier, the, the order doesn't give us any, any right or any authority to detain anyone just because we believe they may be in violation of, of, the, of the curfew. What we can do, it, it's going to hopefully eliminate a lot of traffic, and we would be able to identify we, uh, issues that would be a violation of statute and give us, or infraction, traffic infraction. So we, we really don't have the teeth just to stop randomly anyone and ask them where they're going. Okay. Um, and then somebody said travel outside of those hours. I think the question is, are you going to stop people that are traveling outside of those hours? No. I didn't think so. Okay. Why is there a need for a curfew under the governor's orders? The orders will already cover all of that. Well, I, I think we talked about the, the only thing we're talking about a curfew is so that we can have less activity at night to not interfere with um, the public safety and first responders. So, Jake, unless you have anything else you want to add, I think we covered that kind of a lot ad nauseum. Um, okay. What difference will it make to have a curfew if everything closes at 10 p.m. anyway? Um, I guess, again, we're just trying to prohibit people from congregating at night, and this is a way to do it. Unless, Sheriff, you have anything else you want to add? I guess not. No, you, know, you, you covered that's That's great. And also, I mean, people that are out uh, violating uh, not only the curfew, but also statutes that are out doing criminal activity. I mean, you know, hopefully we'll have a limited amount of traffic, and we can identify the, the, the actual criminal activity going on as well. Uh, this is a question for the sheriff. Was talking a lot about people out at night. Are they going to see an increase in crime since stores are more vulnerable? Not sure about that, but well, I mean, we 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 obviously are prepared for that. We are prepared for uh, um, any increase in criminal activity, and that's that's why a curfew would help us with with that as well. Because hopefully, a lot of those people that would normally be out not wanting to do criminal activity would be home and we could identify these areas and pay attention to the businesses, uh, it's, it's, which we do every night. And hopefully this will make it easier for us to identify the criminal activity. Okay. Um, Sheriff Rick, well Rick Wells said that the only things open our convenience store after 10. Are they going to close fast food restaurants too? We're not closing anything, so I don't know what time these uh, fast food restaurants close. If, if they're still open, they will remain open with the drive through so We're not closing anyone. That's, that's essential. Okay. Um, this next one, I would she be violating the curfew if she goes to the post office to do business weekly? Is the post office considered an essential business? Postal services, I believe, are listed in that federal government document as an essential service. Um, uh, uh, would she be violating the curfew if she goes to the post office to do business weekly? So stated differently, apparently she's concerned about being seen at the post office between 10 p.m. and 5 a.m. Um, practically speaking, I don't know that anybody does postal business between 10 p.m. and 5 a.m. And, and presumably she might be a worker, and workers are allowed to go to work during those hours. Um, they're exempt. Okay, we have a couple of comments where they support the curfew, hope they enact the curfew. And this is another one, lives in a condo association, recently found out one of their owners from New York came down and hasn't self-isolated. What should they do to report them? Hmm. I can answer that. Call the Department of Health. <laughs> there you go. Call the Department of Health. Okay. All right. Um, Okay, the governor updated executive order. This order supersede any other conflicting order. Does the BOCC not care about the governor executive order section four? I think we clarified that, right, Vicki, if you could just restate. Uh, yes, I, you know, to, um, 
No, we absolutely care about the governor's executive order, and I'm confident that all seven commissioners care very much about the governor's executive order. Again, what we are proposing here today is more restrictive than the governor's executive order, and therefore it is allowed. Okay. Um, why are they only reporting deaths and spread but not healed? I don't, Jake, is that one you want to take? The Department of Health um, website online has all the statistics, and there are also statistics statewide county by, and by each county. In fact, you can see the number of tests given, the number of positives, which would also indicate the number of negatives. It's also in the report. So we would, we would refer people to look at the Department of Health's website for any data. Okay. How does this affect or does it affect municipalities? Yes, it affects the municipalities, and I will tell you all the municipalities that are on the policy group did ask us to do this unanimously. And the language of the resolution is clear that it applies within all municipal boundaries with the exception of the town of Longboat Key. And let me just address that very briefly. Uh, the town manager was on our policy call uh, yesterday and expressed, as I understood it, Jake, you correct me if I'm wrong, but he expressed a desire for the town of Longboat Key to follow uh, the lead of Sarasota County government as opposed to Manatee. Uh, and we had no problem with that. And so we respectfully carved out Longboat Key uh, from this resolution for that sole purpose. I've heard it suggested that there are other reasons behind that carve out. And those, uh, those suggestions are absolutely false. All right. <clears throat> This question is actually one that I need to, uh, to make a change or ask for a change as well. It says, in parentheses, how does this affect or does it affect utilities and electric? And I, uh, under um, paragraph two, subparagraph D, it says utility repairs. I would like to say re utility workers, because many utility workers are going to work after hours. They're not just doing repairs. They might be, in fact, going to work uh, a night shift or something. So I wanted to change that. Um, to utility workers. Uh, yes, sir. I'm sure that the two attorneys are going to comment, maybe, but um, the, the workers are already deemed um, essential uh, under the governor's order. So this is under the curfew. I want to make sure that okay. it says utility repairs could be done. Uh, but, but, but look at the very next item, Madam Chair. Item E, state and local government employees and officials providing services. That covers our employees out there not ours, private. I'm talking about FPL. Yeah. I'm talking about private utility workers might be having hours that are past curfew hours. So re it says utility repairs, but they might be going to the plant to do work. So that. Well, again, if they're going to the plant to do work, that's covered by item A persons commuting to and from places of employment. Okay. I just I received a request from FPL to ask for that change, and so I'm asking for it. <laughs> Okay. Um, all right. Somebody wanted to know why Florida has had a slow response to the situation. <laughs> I wish I knew. I wish it would have been done. I wish we wouldn't have the situation, but I don't know that looking back is all that helpful, but anybody want to make a comment? Uh, well, there's many different opinions about that. Um, I, I'm not going to get into that. Um, so, but I, I'll tell you that... Um, the, where we find man ourselves today, Manatee County, is uh, at a pivotal point to, to make a difference uh, and flatten the curve. Okay. Um, curfew will be helpful, but everyone needs to being. I don't know what that means. Um, why are we trying to find ways around the real problem, the virus? We need to take it seriously. I assume that's a comment. Would like to see a discussion of the religious loophole and how that is addressed locally. Um, the reality is there is a religious loophole. I've heard from people that think it's, and I won't call it a loophole, it was specifically provided for. I think the governor did that um, based on concerns about the uh, constitutionality of prohibiting religious gatherings. I will say from this commissioner's perspective that I would hope that churches will do their services remotely. That's the safest thing. I know that a lot of folks that attend church services, including my church, are elderly. They should not be in a group together in the same congregation in the room. That's my personal opinion. I don't think that we're going to do anything different 
here than what is in the executive order, but I certainly hope that um, churchgoers will practice their religion um, by tuning in, I know I have done so, and that they will um, celebrate Easter by staying safe. That's my personal opinion. I don't know if anybody else wants to add to that. Um, any board members want to add to that? Okay. I have a question again. I'm sorry, Carol? I'm Okay. Um, again, it sounds like there's some adamantly against, some are for. So let's try to narrow this down. First of all, again, this is my opinion, and then you can talk about it. I still think when we revisit this, it needs to come back for a board vote. Okay. I have no you. problems. <coughs> and I have no problems to continue possibly looking at the curfew starting at 1030 or 11. 5.30 a.m. or Carol, whatever. can I please ask you just to stick to the question so we can get through these questions? Only talk about, if you want, the religious loophole. We're going to have time to debate afterwards, but I'm trying to get through all of these governor questions passed in public. That. The governor passed that. That's not on our agenda today. I'm not going to even address that. That Right now, they should be 10 feet separating. That's what everybody's recommending. That's what the governor, that's what the president's recommending. And... Um, but I guess from what I talked to Mickey earlier, that was taken out of our um, bailiwick to even discuss from what I understood. Maybe I'm wrong. But they're supposed to be compliant. And um, if they're not, somebody needs to go to the church should report it, and then they'll have to enforce it appropriately. And this is not us. This is the president, and this is the governor. Okay. Thank you. Anyone else want to weigh in on that specific comment regarding... The person asking is they'd like to see a discussion of the religious loophole and how that's addressed locally. So anyone else want to? Anybody else want to comment? Okay, then we'll keep moving along. Um, I live in a condo community, association closed pools. Ticker tape says it's still safe to go swimming. Is it okay to use a community pool still? Madam Chair, I would suggest that we should refrain from advising folks on whether it's safe to use community pools. Those are decisions they need to make on their own. Okay. Uh, what about jet ski ramps? One by DeSoto Bridge in Palmetto. Uh, is that something that is county Correct. property? Jet ski ramp? Do we have such a thing in the county? I'm not sure. At, at this point, I'm not sure which particular one they're talking about, Mr. Barnott. It's the city of Palmetto. It's in the city of Palmetto. Has it been closed? Yes. yes. Okay, it has been closed, apparently. Um, okay, are they going to close the pier by Anna Maria Oyster Bar? Has that been closed, the pier in, um, I think it's Braden Beach, isn't that the pier? Up there? Anna Maria Oyster Bar. Right. We'll have to check and see what the status of that is and get back with this. Individual. Yeah, we will, we'll answer if you left your um, email address, that would be good. Yes. Another uh, question or comment, private country clubs golf courses. After golfing all day, members are allowed to come back into the country club to eat, drink alcoholic beverages. They aren't complying with the CDC guidelines or finding loopholes and putting the staff at risk. Is there anything that can be done about this? As, the, as this person knows, they are privately owned. Um, okay. I did get an answer. The pier is not being closed according to John Chappie. I got that um, in a text. Uh, in regards to private country clubs golf courses, I, I assume that, I don't know. <laughs> Does we'll anyone have, have an answer to that one? Not you know, sure. Commissioner, I'm, I'm only the sheriff, but I would believe that if, uh, if, even if it's private, if it's licensed through um, the DDPR to, to sell alcohol and food, then they would risk losing their license if they did not comply. But I, I don't. That may be an attorney question. Okay. All righty. Um, uh, Madam Chair, can I add to that statement, that question? Sure. On Country Club? Sure. Uh, I don't know which Country Club they're referring to in that email because all the Country Clubs that I know, and I've spoke to most of them, uh, the restaurants are closed. They're only doing takeout uh, like the, all the restaurants are doing. Uh, so people are not going back in and, and having drinks or eating. That is not happening in most of the country clubs that I've, I know of, and there's a lot out east. So, And I can just add, IMG has shut down their whole country club. I mean, the, the golf course, you can, but you have to ride one person to a cart, 
but the the restaurant and everything is is shut down totally, and all the golf course cups have been put in upside down so that nobody can reach in, and so you can't remove the pin while you play. So whatever that's worth. Okay, thank you for that information. Um, um, somebody else on out there had a question or comment, board members. Okay. Um, Keeping going with the list of questions, after reading the list of essential businesses, they want they want to know what non-essential businesses are. So I, you know, I guess we clarified that earlier that we're not going to list non-essential businesses because we basically, just to be clear, there's no proposal to change the governor's order about essential businesses. We're not adding to essential businesses or not deleting by this resolution. Is that correct? That is correct, Madam Chair. Okay. So somebody says, clarification of why gun stores are essential. Well, you'll have to ask the governor. That was <laughs> what he put in his, um, his order, and we're going to abide by that. Is golf an essential business? Are they still going to be opened? <coughs> Sherry, you had, you had said this earlier, that the county golf courses will remain open. Um, the cities is closed. I heard city of Bradenton. Yes. Private ones, it's up to the private yes. pri private providers. So um, I don't, you know, honestly, the governor did say recreation was an essential, and I don't think he specifically addressed golf. He specifically addressed walking, biking, hiking, fishing. Um, I don't know. So I, w I would say if it wasn't specifically addressed, that it probably is okay, but that's up to the private owners at this time. Okay, uh, someone is a locksmith business, and will the curfew affect them traveling? I think we answered since the curfew exempts people going to their jobs. If you're a locksmith, certainly you are allowed. Absolutely. Okay. So let's say that, that a burglary is committed at midnight, and the person's uh, front door lock is broken, and they need an immediate locksmith. That locksmith would qualify as a person traveling to and from a place of employment. Okay, thank you. All right. Uh, will there be restrictions on hair and nail salons not complying with the CDC guidelines? I'm going to go ahead and ask the sheriff. Um, I know many of us ladies have been asking this question. <laughs> are they essential businesses or not? Uh, I have heard they are not essential businesses. Is that true? Anyone have an opinion on that? I know how I feel, but... No, you're, Madam, Madam Chair, you're correct, and we'll ha we've already been to a lot of those businesses. We have to ask them to close if they have not already. It's, a lot of us are going to have long here at the Sheriff's Office, to be honest with you, and this is the way it is right now, but uh, they have not been listed as an essential business. Yeah. yeah this is Jake. That's correct. As, uh, I agree with the Sheriff. Um, the, the State Emergency Management Office has, has weighed in on that as well. Okay. How are they going to do vacation rentals when the companies aren't issuing refunds, especially when they're running illegally? Uh, Mr. Palmer, you want to take a stab at that one? Uh, let me look at that again. How are they going to do vacation rentals when the companies aren't issuing refunds, especially when they are running illegally? Well, okay, we, we start with the concept that the governor has entered an executive order prohibiting short-term rentals for the near future. Is that, is that not correct, Jake? Yes. Um, and so in terms of companies issuing refunds, I don't know that that's anything we've got any jurisdiction over. Yeah, sh we sure. have We have been um, having our... Um, Convention and Visitor, Visitors Bureau um, Director Elliot Falcioni to try to assist individuals who have complaints in the, the tourism or vacation rental area, but we're referring them to the appropriate state offices. Okay, thank you. Does the stay-at-home order or curfew in the county prohibit nursing and rehabilitation facilities from discharging at-risk patients into home with other at-risk patients? Jake, do you have any thoughts on that? It doesn't prohibit that. There's um, a lot of a, a lot of con uh, a lot of conversation at both the county level here, um, our surrounding counties, along with uh, statewide at the Emergency Operations Center on congregate sheltering, um, and 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 the need for that. So we are working for on that. 
Okay. I would also suggest that that falls under exception E, excuse me, exception C, the transport of medical patients. Okay. Someone is a Betsy new... on that one? Yes, ma'am. Betsy, on that one, um, if you're in the hospital currently and you need to be transferred to assisted living or skilled nursing, you have to test negative twice before uh, being transferred over for safety purpose. So the hospital has to test you twice to be negative before you can be transferred back. Okay, thank you. Um, someone stated they're a New York resident and they've been here since December 31st, want to know if they'll be able to go home with these in effect. Yes. You can go home if you're a New York resident, you can go back? Please do. <laughs> we love having you, but hopefully you'll, you'll do what's best for you and be safe, okay. Um, someone lives in a gated community, has had unexpected guests using their boat ramp. They have currently closed the boat ramp. Should they have it opened or closed at this time? I assume this is a private boat ramp. They can they can keep it open, right? We don't have any opinion on that. Is that no restrictions correct? on private private boat ramps? That's, right. That's that's not correct anymore. Oh, okay. Stay oh, okay. Please. It's very Please. difficult to <laughs> understand how it works because again, the governor's order is very challenging. There's there's Miami Dade orders attached to it, and then those orders reference other orders that are not attached to it, but right now the governor's order does require private, privately run boat ramps and marinas and so forth to be closed with the exception for commercially licensed saltwater fishermen. That wasn't the case until this order was issued, but now they are, they are closed along with public boat ramps. And I can understand why you wouldn't realize it because it's very hard to find. You have to dig for it to understand what's going on. Okay. Um. Are they going to close the pier? The pier is in the city of Bradenton. I, I don't, well, I, we got a message, or I got a message from Joe Hendricks. He says the pier is not being closed according to Chappie and Cosby. So if we're talking about the pier in Braden Beach, it's not proposed to be closed. And we have no authority to close it at the county, so I, I guess that's the answer. But I'm not sure what pier, because it didn't say which pier was the question. Um, Sherry, we've received some questions. I'm just looking at my email. Do you want me to go through those? We had indicated um, after a certain point in time that we would re respond to each question, okay. um, not necessarily in this public setting. We had closed the call-in time frame. Okay. M Madam Chair, back to the, to the written list of questions for a moment. Maybe I missed it, but did you skip the question at the very top of the second page about grocery stores and face masks? Oh, I may have. All right, need to tell grocery store to wear a face mask. Can we trust managers to make sure employees are preventing? I don't think we have any authority to make a grocery store. Though the, You know, the stuff on face masks is changing. We're all trying to keep up with it. I even tried to make my own, uh, my own face mask last night, and I failed at that <laughs> sewing exercise, I have to admit. But, um, I, I, think, I think the very frank answer to that question is yes, we must place some level of trust uh, in, in the grocery store managers that they're going, going to take steps to protect both customers and personnel. Right. Okay. Um, at this point, Sherry, you think we're going to just respond to everyone else? Yes, we have, all of, we have all of the questions. We are going to respond to each one of them um, by tomorrow at noon. Okay. So... Um, Okay, hey, at this time I'm gonna ask the board for um, a motion whether or not you want to support the resolution as it is or you want to change it. Um, we can do any one of these things, so I'm gonna ask for a motion. Misty, I, want to, yeah, I have a question. Okay, go ahead. I think that I heard Misty, go ahead. Yeah, go I'm ahead, not Misty. ready to make a motion, but I do have a couple more questions, please. I've had a lot of emails today about the boat ramps, and I know we're not specifically talking about the boat ramps, but what people have asked me is that our governor uh, and his executive order has asked that the public boat ramps be open and ours are closed. And is there someone who can just kind of go over that topic quickly and let us know when the uh, local boat ramps will be reopened? Okay. 
Madam Chair, I can address that if you okay, like. Please. I think people misunderstand what's going on with the boat ramps because it is very hard to follow. The um, There's an order referenced in the orders attached to the governor's order that deals with boat ramps. It's been amended twice, and right now the current status is states all marinas, boat launches, docking facilities, etc., shall close effective March 21st. Notwithstanding the foregoing, any person with a commercial saltwater license issued by FWC may enter and use, and then it references the Miami-Dade publicly owned ramps, but not private ramps. That has been incorporated into the governor's executive order. So at this point, the way his order reads, marinas and boat launches are closed. So even if the county were to lift its order under the governor's executive order, we would still have to keep them closed because that, as Mr. Palmer has stated, would constitute a conflict. We would be trying to open facilities that the governor has ordered closed. I'm not sure why the message hasn't gotten out from the governor's office, maybe because this is incorporated by reference to a reference, so it's hard to figure out. You have to go online and find the most recent Miami-Dade order to understand the status of boat ramps, but they are closed under the governor's executive order. Okay, okay thank you, and I have a question about large families. Because in my district, I have um, areas where we have large families, a large number of people living in a small home. And oftentimes there are many cars. Um, so I want to ask the sheriff if he's going to have difficulty enforcing uh, the, the limit of 10 people congregating together when they're a family, or is there an exception to that? If you had 12 people under the same roof, and family members, we would not be trying to enforce this resolution. Okay, good to hear. And also, Sheriff, um, I'm assuming that you're training your deputies, uh, if this passes, in a way that everyone's then enforcing uh, the curfew in the same way. And can you just tell us a little bit about that, please? Well, we, we've had to train our deputies almost every day this week because of the, of the different uh, amendments and, and, and the order itself. So we have two attorneys on staff, uh, and we send out the legal guidelines, and we make sure that our supervisors are there to explain to the deputies in case they have, in case they have a question. Okay, thank you. Um, Madam Chairman, I just have a couple of other comments. You know, uh, I feel like the county's primary purpose is to protect the public. And we are in a, the middle of a crisis, as you have said. And so the rules are a little bit different than they normally would be. You know, I'm looking um, at everything that's happened, and there's nothing that's really even open after 10 o'clock. So if a curfew was imposed, I'm not even sure how that adds to the restrictions of our personal liberties during this crisis, because there's really nowhere to go unless you're headed to work or someplace that's appropriate. Um, I'd like to also say that I, I hope the public can work together. No matter what happens uh, with this motion, whether this is approved or denied, I want the public to work together and support our first responders. We are in the middle of an emergency, and law enforcement and our paramedics and our hospital and health workers, they really need our support. Um, we, this is not a time for arguing. Um, I do like Carol's suggestion that every seven days the board would reconvene to extend the, uh, the curfew if this passes. I think it is important that the elected officials weigh in on that type of decision. So those are my comments. Betsy? Yes. Commissioner uh, Trace? Go ahead, Priscilla. Thank you. Um, I really, a lot of this is because people are not paying attention to what we're saying. I do not like this, but I will probably vote for it with a few revisions. This virus is killing people, and we're here. Just yesterday, there were 35 people playing soccer at Blackstone Park. So people are not listening to us. I think it's a little, it's the inconsistency. The people don't understand why they can't use a boat ramp, which I now understand the private ones are being closed also when the governor's telling you to go out and fish, yet we have told you it's okay to play golf on our county golf course, but we are not able to do the boat ramp. 
But I also agree that these are times that have, we have never done before. We do not have a playbook on a killing virus. So I think that uh, the, the public should realize that we take this very seriously. We're doing the best we can in extremely bad times. I would like to make some changes to this resolution, and uh, we'll talk about it, and I'll be happy to make a motion. I'd like to go from 11 to 5 instead of 10 to 5. I'd like to do away with the 250 foot with the dog people, because I think most people walk further than 250 foot, and I think it's pretty obvious if you're walking your dog versus doing something nefarious. Um, I would like to say private property, exempting the inside of your home. However, the lawyer can make that a little per prettier. If you're doing breaking the law outside in your yard, I have no problem with the sheriff coming on. He can do that now. If you're doing something in the house, I think there would have to be some kind of complaint or something before he goes. And I also agree with Carol and Misty that uh, I think this should be voted on every seven days. Did uh, Do I need to repeat those again, or do we get them? Madam Chair. Do you have those, Mickey? Uh, I do. Can you? Do you want to make a motion, Priscilla? Well, I, 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 I will be happy to make a motion that we accept the resolution changing the uh, curfew time from 11 to 5, do away completely with a 250-foot dog walking radius, uh, however, uh, exempting the inside of the house. In other words, the sheriff cannot go to the inside of the house unless he has an actual complaint, he can't, you know, and that the board reconvene every seven, seven days to either yay or nay this. That's my motion. Madam Chair. Do I have a second? Can I amend it? I'd like to make an amendment. I will second it for discussion. Go ahead, and Carol. I'd like to make a friendly amendment to extend this to Monday at 2 p.m., and then we can reevaluate then. And the reason why, Priscilla, is we are doing a, a very drastic step. Since I've been in office since 1991, I don't think this has ever happened. And we have a lot of angry people, and I think our, our public safety needs a rest. And I think we need to regather after the weekend, and we can extend it and then maybe do it in increments like that. But in all fairness, seven days, you know, I think we should at least reevaluate it. I'm sorry, staff, but it's a big step for Manatee County, and you, you wait till you just see the hate mails we've already gotten since we've been on the phone. Well, I'm expecting hate mail. Uh, Sherry or Jake, would you like to uh, – I don't have a problem with that, but that just means we all have to, have to come back on Monday, which I don't have a problem with that either. Sherry and Jake, do all rather, would you all rather see it Monday, rediscuss, and then we would vote every seven days on a Monday, or would you all rather leave it on a Friday before the weekend? Mr. Palmer can uh, chime in after I'm done um, uh, as far as the seven days, but um, I, I, do, I do not see a need to come back uh, on Monday. Um, seven every seven days, I, I think, is is um, is is great. Um, but remember the um, the work that goes in to put these meetings on, and more social distancing that needs to occur. That's what I want you to be mindful of. It's a lot of work when you bring this in uh, every seven days. The work that has to go in to the public, and you all as commissioners, and with social distancing. And I'd like right. to. I'd like to then say I, also, this I'm is... Concerned, the staff is not for it. I will leave my motion as is. We would vote every seven days, which would be next Friday. Yeah, I just, I, I do know the work that goes into this. I do know that um, we have all of the mayors, all of the police chiefs, all the fire district represented, the school district. Every week we have a discussion about this. Every week, if a commissioner wants to change something and they have a reason to change it, Call Sherry and ask her to do that. But to have to put on a meeting, we have, I don't know how many of you can see, all the people that are here, we probably have at least 20 people in this room, which will, to me, is in violation. I thought this should have been, um, you know, this meeting should be totally virtual. We're not set up to do things totally virtual yet. So to say that we have to all get together every seven days doesn't make a lot of sense to me. Y'all have the ability to ask Sherry to put something different on an agenda and have a virtual meeting. I, rather than, I agree, Carol, no doubt that this is um, something that I, I wish we didn't have to do. I, I would love to vote against this. I would love to vote against having a curfew. It seems draconian to me. 
Um, but I have to respect the people that were on that call that all asked to have this done. All of the mayors, all of the police chiefs, including our sheriff, the public safety folks. I, I have to respect their opinion um, at this time. So I would just okay, ask that I will that take we... the, the board every seven days, but I would put in that Sherry needs to personally talk to us uh, Wednesday, maybe in the middle of the week, personally talk to us and just see, you know, bring it, not wait for us to call, just make a little quick thing and make sure that she has polled us whether or not we need a meeting. I would put that in because I think we do need to be talked to once a week. So Sherry, yeah, yeah. Sherry would poll the, rather than just me me asking the um, the uh, public safety director, you're saying the county administrator will poll the commissioners to determine if a meeting would needed to be added. You would add language to that? Could we do that? Uh, yes, that's comment? what I'm saying. If, if, Sherry, if Sherry is poll, and, and we can't call you and tell you because of sunshine. So we have to go through someone else. And if Sherry wants to say, Jay, whichever person Sherry wants to designate, I have no problem with that if she's too busy. I'm sure Jacob's too busy. But I think once a week we need to be uh, have someone that is just kind of talking to us and see where we're going on this that uh, is kind of in charge of this. So I think once a week we need to kind of be made aware of what's going on on a personal telephone call. That's my opinion. Then that's kind of, I guess, in my motion would be. Madam Chair. Yeah, Carol. Go ahead, Carol. Okay, question. Would the motioner um, consider possibly um, having Sherry call us Tuesday for a potential meeting Wednesday? I'm sorry. I know this is a lot of work for staff. But again, in my history of being into politics uh, since 91, this has never happened. A lot of people are angry either way. No matter what we do, we're going to, I mean, they're angry. But uh, I, I have no problem We're doing this the first time. Scary, we should, yeah, yeah, I, I would say an administrator. I would say one person at a time, please. Please stop. Nobody can interpret what you're saying. I was saying, uh, well, I am the motioner. I have no problem with Sherry polling us, talking to us once a week, except I would say instead of Sherry, I would have it as an administrator. I do not know that I Sherry needs to have the burden of this, unless y'all want it to be Sherry. Sher Sherry's good with the burden. The she's point nodding, point. saying she's good with the burden. We just need to okay, work on the language. Sure. I think we're, I think Let we're, me we're, ask Mickey to uh, state if he can incorporate this language. Uh, well, I think, we're, I think we're really getting wrapped around the axle here. There is no need right. to instruct the administrator within the four corners of this resolution to communicate with you once a week. You are giving her a directive to communicate with you once a week. You do not need to include it in this resolution. Correct, and then just one other thing to consider. Um, th this, the policy and how we set it up um, is not new. Um, this is how we handle hurricanes every year. Um, and we meet weekly on Wednesdays at 2 p.m. with the policy group. And that set forth a guidance by the Florida Department of Emergency Management. So um, I, again, wanna ca I want to, to caution you when we bring all these people into this room and as we continue to get more cases, I don't advise that. All right, then just throw that then, then throw that amendment out 100%. So all I've added is 11 to 5, do away with a 250 foot, and exempting inside of the house. And then I'm done. That is my motion. Seconder, Seconder agrees to the motion. Now please state your name so you can make a comment one at a time. Vanessa Baugh. Vanessa Baugh, go ahead. Vanessa Baugh. Go ahead, Vanessa. Okay, not, here's the thing that I need. I think uh, Jake... I, I just want to say this to you because I understand what you're saying and I totally get it. I'm sure there's a lot to put those meetings together. Uh, you know what? And, and I, I'm sorry about that. But let's remember here that you're in that position because our board voted to put the state of emergency in place. Now, that being said, the policy group, I understand y'all meet, but I have to tell you, just because the policy group needs doesn't mean the rest of the commissioners know anything that was said or done in that policy meeting. Because I can tell you, I don't. So that is the issue. Perhaps, I think, from sitting here listening to it going back and forth uh, between commissioners, I understand why the commissioners are feeling the way they do. I believe it or not, I agree with Carol that we need some sort of communication, but maybe it would be easier for the other commissioners who are not in this policy group to receive an email or some sort of update letting us know what transpires 
in that policy group. We because that. believe it or not, we're all... I believe that there has been a memo after every policy group meeting that Sherry has put out. Sherry, maybe you could clarify on that. Commissioners, um, I believe I've generated an update at least twice a day, every day since March 14th, and there's nothing being withheld. Um, we, uh, I am available and take phone calls, make the phone calls back to the commissioners. I will say at this meeting and to everyone here, I will call you daily if you need an update or if you want to give me an update. There's absolutely no reason why anybody should think that I would not be talking to each commissioner. And, and I'll just say, you know, I, I, I agree that we probably need to schedule some meetings because you all do need to weigh in on what's going on. We, you do represent your citizens. We do need to have these conversations. And we've all been operating, it's just been crazy for me these past couple of weeks. We're just trying to deal with all these executive orders. What does it mean? The numbers. Yeah, we need perspective. I, I really do appreciate having this discussion, believe it or not, hearing from you all what you think, what's going on. It's very helpful. We need to get to a point where we can do remote meetings so the public can weigh in. Madam Chair, I, I'm sorry. This, Madam Chair, this is Vanessa. I got disconnected. I'm back on now. So I missed what was said. I apologize. Oh, that's because I was agreeing with you. Um, <laughs> yeah, I'm sorry. <laughs> I, I was, <laughs> Madam Chair, <laughs> there's Steve on your list. Okay. All right, Steve, I'll have you. I, I just said that we do need to have meetings. I agree with you, Vanessa. I really do think we need an opportunity to discuss this. I'll tell you, as your chair, being in these policy decisions, it's, it's, it, you know, it's a little bit daunting. I do want input from all of the commissioners. You represent your constituents. I, I really appreciate, you know, I just wanted to hear from y'all what's going on in your communities, because we can't talk outside of these meetings, and we haven't had meetings. So I, I agree, and I've talked to Sherry about this, that we need to have meetings. I just, I, I don't want to get where we have to have an emergency meeting every seven days. But I do think we need to have a schedule. We need to get to where we are having uh, totally remote meetings. So the public doesn't have to come in here. You know, we need to take this seriously. They, they tell us not to gather, and here we are gathering. Um, so I, I really hope we can get to that. Sherry, I'll go ahead and, and defer to you on that. Um. Um, we're here to serve you. We're here to serve the public. We'll have meetings as often, as frequently as the board desires. Um, yes, there's there's some work to put into it, but we have uh, an amazing staff, and we will continue to try to meet the needs of the uh, virtual, which would make uh, all of the participants involved more safe. Um, our our clerk, our METV, any of the media, and everyone. But we're here to do what this board desires yeah and, and so to be clear i was saying that i don't necessarily think that it has to be the emergency meeting but yeah th things are changing on a weekly basis we hope they will we hope things will be getting better we hope we can back off on some of these restrictions but we know for the <laughs> because it is 30 days we're told till april 30th we're going to be locked down so I don't see things changing significantly over the next 30 days. Uh, sorry. sorry, Madam Chairman, members of the board, what we do think you're going to want to be uh, briefed on is the status of our revenues and expenditures and the status of the budget and as we progress through this month. So yes, we have talked um, as a staff about potentially having some work sessions where we would actually be able to give you some updates. Our financial management department is managing uh, the budget currently and the projections for the future on a weekly basis. So we foresee those as being valuable discussions to keep you informed of the status of the operations of the county as well as these other uh, important decisions. Okay. Uh, Steve, you want to speak? Yeah, I just, you know, well, first of all, Betsy, thank you for doing what you're doing we're, I'm so happy you're not in Africa, you know, for this <laughs> <laughs> you were. I'm not. <laughs> Go ahead. No, maybe I am. I'm kidding. <laughs> but, you know, I just, um, you know, for me, I, I just don't, you know, to me the resolution is something that just, it, it just doesn't work for me. I'm thinking, you know, the, the, the governor's proclamation, the president's, you know, we have enough tools 
to control what we need to control, we need to continue to get more information in from our testing sites. Um, you know, we haven't really got a lot of those back in yet. Uh, obviously, they're not looking good. But, you know, at the same time, I think we just maybe need to, you know, whether we like it or not, do more of these meetings telephonically or whatever. Um, because, you know, I mean, it, it, it's, it's every day it's changing, you know, type of thing. But at this point, you know, I'm just not in favor of, you know, jumping ahead. I don't think that this curfew thing is going to change anything. Yeah, it might give some people, you know, some time off from what I'm hearing, which, you know, God knows they deserve it. But, you know, somebody calls at 2 a.m. with a heart attack, EMS is going to be out there, you know, because that's the way, you know, Jake and, and his group run, you know. So it's not, you know, so, you know, and, you know, and, you know, Sheriff Wells, you know, he's got to have his patrols out there, you know, if there's a car accident or something that happens. Um, so I just don't see the need personally to put in a curfew at this point. I think it's just, again, something we need to keep monitoring and, um, you know, I mean, and, and let the people do what they're good at. You know, Jake and his group and Sheriff Wells and his group, they're great, you know, and God bless them for what they have to do. But, you know, I, I just don't see, you know, at this point, you know, where curfew is going to add any, you know, anything better to, to prevent what we have in front of us which is obviously a huge disaster. And let's hope, you know, that, you know, at some point it will pass. But anyway, those, those are just my thoughts. But I, I'm, I'm just not in favor of, you know, of, 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 you know, signing off on this thing, whether it's 200 feet or 2,000 yards to walk your damn dog, you know, at night. I understand it. So anyway, those are my thoughts. Ben, okay. thank you again, you know, for what you're doing. Madam Chair, Madam Chair, wow. Hold on. Uh, go ahead, Mickey, and then I'm going to call on the rest Quick of point. Sh Sherry knows this, but I, I, I think it's, it's worth repeating that in terms of her daily or weekly calls to, to commissioners, however, however often they may be, that she cannot act as an intermediary between commissioners uh, passing along information. That is a violation of the Sunshine Law. So Sherry knows that, but I think it's just worth repeating. And so. May I add a comment to that, Madam Chair? Sure. It is also inappropriate under the Sunshine Law to poll commissioners and try to gain the, a, a, a board vote that way. That's not something she can do. So customarily what we do is report to you what's going on, which is perfectly acceptable, and it sounds like that's where the board is going from the, some of the dialogue. Well, could we could we go and for two could we go I for two weeks? Could we go for two weeks before we have another meeting? That's just throwing it out. Go ahead, Carol. No. Well, okay, guys, we've gone off track. I mean, we. My whole purpose of my comment was instead of going for seven days, have Sherry or somebody talk to us individually, and then call for a meeting, whether we extend it. I don't think we should. I don't support it for seven days. I'm sorry, Jake. I'm sorry, Sherry. I don't support it now. I want to see what happens after this weekend. I want to hear from the sheriff, and I want to hear from our public safety. I don't want to wait seven days. You guys aren't getting all the grief either for or against this. I want to hear from you after so many days and see if you still recommend we continue it and then have an action that we either continue it or we stop it. This is a very big step we're all making, and it's going to affect a lot of people's lives. I 100% of public safety. You know that. I just want to do it right. So may I make a suggestion about this, Madam Chair? Sure. Because I, I just want to make sure the board understands the seven-day requirement is in the resolution because it's statutorily driven, just like the other emergency resolutions that you adopted. Under Florida law, if we're going to be eligible for state assistance, we have to limit our emergency declarations to seven days. Yeah. And this resolution is very much dependent on that state of emergency. That's part of the legal basis for adopting the resolution. It's also, quite honestly, as you alluded to a moment ago, dependent upon the governor's 
executive order, which extends till April 30. So I think that the issue of the board's opportunity to revisit this is a, is a separate issue. If you simply schedule a meeting for next week, you don't have to say anything in the resolution about it because any commissioner at that meeting can move to repeal this resolution if they feel the curfew should be lifted. So I, I, would, exactly. I would suggest you separate the two issues, deal with the resolution as written and as the, the movement has suggested it be adopted, and then decide whether or not you want to direct Sherry to schedule a meeting for next week whenever the board and the administrator are comfortable doing it. At that, at that time, if you decide you want to lift it, any commissioner can move to lift it by saying, I'm, I move that we re repeal the resolution. Okay. That is exactly well, well, one, at a time, one at a time. It, we've heard from Carol. Let me hear from somebody else. We've heard from Steve. We've heard from Vanessa. Vanessa. Please. Excuse me? Who? Vanessa, please. Okay. Go ahead, Vanessa. This, this crazy out east commissioner here. Uh, you know what? I, what I'm sitting here hearing from all the commissioners is that we feel we have the need to feel that we are more informed than what we're being. So, again, I, I somehow or the other, I got disconnected when I brought up about policy group and, and getting a report or something from the policy group. I'm assuming y'all discussed it while I was trying to get back in the meeting. I'd, I'd like to know what was said about that, because I think that what I'm hearing from the other commissioners is that we're feeling that we need to be able to have more of our, our finger on the pulse from our residents in this county that we represent. And I think that's really important. So, no, I think to wait two weeks is way too long. I'm sorry, Madam Chair, but I'd have to, at this point, agree with Commissioner Whitmore. Um, I understand where she's coming from, and I've got a feeling that by after this weekend, we'll probably have a good idea from the emails that we see and so forth, because I, I don't know if y'all are all looking at your emails, but I can tell you I am, and wow. Um, so I, I understand. So what was the decision on the policy group? on all the commissioners knowing what is being discussed in this policy group. I'll go ahead and defer to Sherry for that because she answered that earlier. So, Commissioner okay, Ball. I don't know what it was. I'm sorry. Yes, Commissioner Ball. Sorry you got disconnected. Um, what I stated was that, as is my job generally um, for board meetings that we have, uh, provide briefings to each one of the commissioners with the same information to each commissioner. Um, that is the same thing that's done from the policy group. I have, we only have met once a week. So I have provided to you and all the other commissioners with the, with the information that the policy group has discussed. And this week it was just related to these two topics. Okay. Uh, and the reason I'm saying it, Sherry, I, you have been tremendous. Uh, don't get don't what I don't take what I'm saying incorrect. But you know, we just feel like we're hearing from residents. Uh, you know, all of us are. I'm sure. I mean, I know I heard Misty say that, and I heard Carol say it. I can tell you, I have been. I'm sure that the rest of us have too, Reggie and Steve. So we just need to have our fingers on the pulse a little bit more than what we've had. Um, I don't know how that's done, but I can understand where Commissioner Whitmore is coming from on this. Uh, I do agree with her. I'm not saying perhaps Monday we should have the meeting, but we certainly need to perhaps have an individual discussion. Uh, Sherry, I hate to ask you to do it with maybe one of your deputies, uh, you know, on, on how it's looking for us, because I think this is something. I'll tell you now, in all honesty, I'm not going to vote for the resolution. Um, I don't feel that it adds anything uh, to what uh, the sheriff's office or uh, the EM, uh, EMS can do. I think they already have all those rights from the, from the governor. I think the governor was pretty explicit. I'd rather stick with what he's done. It makes it easier, I think, for our residents to understand as well. I've heard that quite a bit from some of the residents that have contacted me. Uh, I worry that we are going to put ourselves in a position that we might not win in court uh, because I don't know that we've ever been in this situation before to say that, you know, as far as private property, uh, we're giving our law enforcement agencies the right to go in, uh, you know, into this situation. So why do that and put ourselves in that position if they're already, they've got certain rights from the governor's uh, orders? I think come Monday we'll have a better feel as to where we are. So either way, I'm not going to vote for it, but 
I still understand what Commissioner Whitmore is saying. I totally agree. I think this will pass, uh, even though I did hear Commissioner Johnson and, and I, obviously, that's true, that won't be voting for it. But it'll probably pass. And if so, I think we certainly, all commissioners, need to have uh, a good idea of what's going on here because I don't think the citizens are going to take it lightly. That's just my Madam thought. Madam Chair. Carol. Madam go, Chair. Go ahead, Carol. Um, just so you know, i got to be very clear. We have all gotten a report after every EOC meeting. That has been priceless. I posted on my social media, and it's got all the information. So I, I'm not talking about that information. I'm talking about the situation of the curfew only. We are being kept up to date. The curfew only is very important to all of us, and that's why I wanted to review that for the seven days. I don't want to wait seven days. And, and, and Phil answered that. That's separate motion. Okay. Um, we have a motion on the floor. I want to clarify, right now it doesn't change the seven days. The seven days would go from today. It would, right? It would become effective today. Is that correct? We didn't talk about effective dates, so it would become effective today. Effective immediately. We would have to reconsider this in seven days next Friday, which could be a meeting, could be sure. uh, totally virtual, which would be cool. <laughs> if we could get there, I would love that. Um, but we're going to make that decision sometime during the week, how we're going to have a meeting, if we're going to have a meeting, based on the motion as it's, it is stands. Is that correct, Mr. Clegg? Well, I'm not certain, to be quite honest, because at one point, Commissioner Trace seemed to suggest she would wanted to walk back some that was of her change to that. Was my understanding as well. I'm not sure if she meant that she wanted to just change the number of days or if she wanted to leave the language as it's presented to the board which allows the curfew to be extended by, by another seven days administratively so i think as your attorneys we could use some clarification yes please i was leaving the, re the that part as written right now okay so so as i understand it so as i understand it commissioner trace is suggesting no changes to numbered section five no changes to numbered section five she is suggesting that the 250-foot language be removed with, with regard to walking of domestic animals. She's suggesting that the hours be amended from 11 to 5, from 10 to 5 to 11 to 5. And she's uh, uh, asking an insertion in Section 4 uh, that accepts uh, uh, the interior space of residences. And, and Madam Chair, my statement earlier was predicated on that intent from Commissioner Trace. In other words, you can simply schedule a meeting, a meeting of the board, and if you decide you want to take this issue up, you can, but the, you will not be required to if, it, if this motion passes because the resolution, the curfew that's established by the resolution can be extended administratively because we're not changing that language. And, and Madam I Chair. think I would, like to, I would like to vote on this, and then we can decide whether or not to have a meeting. But yes, that is that is correct on how my motion is. I, I, I would Madam like Chair, to suggest. Can I have a comment I, sec, hold on just a second. Go ahead, Bill. We're going to do electronic meetings. We desperately need a way for commissioners to be recognized electronically, because it's very hard to manage I agree. through a speakerphone. This is this is really difficult, and it could cause us legal problems at some point. Right. I mean, we got to use Zoom or something. I mean, we can all be educated, hopefully, on that. I mean, that that's going to be something that we know we need going forward. Um, I'm going to ask, the, as a seconder, I'm going to ask the motioner if they would agree with my language, changing utility repairs to utility workers. Under this I, I, see, I don't see much difference, but if it makes uh, FPNL happy, uh, you know, I'm fine with that. Okay. All right. So that just changes the language in uh, paragraph 2, subparagraph D, to you, from utility repairs to utility workers. We have the seconder's agreement to that, please. I'm the seconder. I'm the seconder, I apologize. <laughs> I would just say utility <laughs> work. Utility, utility work. work. Yeah. Okay. That, that works for Misty me. Utility Serbia, work. please. All right. Uh, Misty, go ahead. Oh, okay, thank I was you. Up next, Madam I'm Chair. sorry, Reggie. I, I did hear you first. It is hard to remember. Reggie, go ahead, because I was talking. I didn't wasn't writing. Go ahead, Reggie. No, no offense to my friend, Misty. Love all you all. Okay, I just had a couple of comments about some of the highlights that Jake made that I think we need to keep out in front of us um, as everyone is thinking, and I'm sure the public is, list is listening. Um, there are projections by April the 8th that our numbers to be up over 300, and our peak will be around the first part of May. 
And my concerns with that is this is an effort to do, to try to curb that and ask our public to be a little bit more sensitive and to be a little bit more responsible on their day-to-day -day activities as far as within social gatherings. And I like the change in the, um, I, I like, I support the motion, to be honest with you, but I still think we should keep out in front of us that this is all about public safety. And it hit home with me last night when I learned about someone that was close, not only came down with coronavirus, but also lost their life, not from this area. But it hit home a little bit different. Our numbers are at three deaths right now, three fatalities. We want to make sure, as leaders, we do our best, whatever efforts we can, in order for us to kind of curb these numbers. And I'm concerned about the April 8th date that Jake gave us, as well as not peaking until May the 2nd. That's very, very concerning. And this is an effort with the curfew to make sure we attempt to address that. But I'm also like, see, we're, we're, this is an effort. We don't know what's going to be next. We do not know what, what will be next and what efforts we're trying. We're doing it because we have public safety at heart. That's it, Madam Chair. Thank you. Misty. Yes, thank you. Um, I want to ask the motioner and the seconder, would you consider an amendment to put an end date on the administrative renewal every seven days? Thank you. I'm thinking, to you know, what, To what purpose? So you're just saying every seven days we'll have to come arch to it again? Or... Yeah, no, what I'm suggesting, I understand the need to not have an emergency meeting every seven days because of the amount of effort it takes. But could we say it can be administratively approved, the curfew, every seven days with an end date of April 30th, for example, or whatever is appropriate? So then at that time, we would need another meeting of the full board to extend it beyond that. The motioner would like to leave it as is, and then I think after we make the motion, whether it passes or not, this is just the time limit. Um, okay, and also, I would also Misty. like to hear the sheriff's opinion on the motion, because we've changed some things that are going to impact how he enforces this rule. So can we hear from the sheriff? Are you still there? Uh -huh. I, I'm good with anything. It, it doesn't, nothing will change the way that we enforce the executive order or the administrative order. Everything will remain the same. We still have the same guidelines in place no matter what the, the board decides. Okay. Thank you. And then I also want to say finally, um, in regards to Steve and Vanessa's comments, I hear what you guys are saying. I respect your opinion. That's fine, but I want everyone to think about this, you know, because I have really thought about it. This is not a further restriction of our liberties or freedom of movement in any way because there's nothing open between those hours anyway, and you're, all, you're already allowed to go uh, to work and, you know, to care for your elderly family member, et cetera, et cetera. So all that it's doing is supporting our law enforcement and first responders to make their lives a little bit easier during this crisis. And that's why I'm going to support this. Thank you. Carol. Go ahead, Carol. To be fair, McDonald's is sorry. 24 hours. I'm, I'm sorry, but I still think, and I know at one point Priscilla had it in it, I still think that we as a board should vote on this. This is not just a state of emergency. I've been through many hurricanes since 91 and many state of emergency, the BP oil spill, all of it. This is important. We're doing a curfew. We should have a board, and it really, it only has to be a few people in the chamber. I don't know why there's 20 people there if there are. But what I'm saying is we need to take responsibility for this vote, and it shouldn't be on the, the chair or the vice chair. It should be on a full board. And, and again, as, as, as Mr. Clegg stated earlier, that's the board's prerogative to bring up that issue at any time in the future. 
You don't have to address it in this resolution. Yeah, I, I think we need to vote on the. But why wouldn't you? I okay, would like to call the question. We have a motion to call uh, the question. Do I have a second? Uh, that was Priscilla. Second. Do I have a second to the motion to call the question? Second. All right, we have a motion to call the question and a second. All those in favor, say aye and say your, I'm going to call roll call. Uh, Vanessa, call the question. I don't care. Okay. No, 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 dear, you have to vote. <laughs> yeah. Okay. Steve Johnson. <laughs> Steve Johnson? Yeah. Yes. Yes. Uh, Priscilla made the motion, so um, who else do I need to call on? Uh, Carol? Nay. Nay? Uh, Misty? Yes. Uh, chair votes aye, so the uh, question is called. Reggie. I think I said Reggie. Reggie seconded the motion, so I said. Yeah, I was a, I was a seconder. Okay. All right. Are we good on that? Did I do that properly? Are we good, Madam Clerk? All right. We have a motion before us. Is everyone cl You want to read the motion just to be clear, uh, Madam Clerk? Can, can I help, maybe? I would appreciate that, yeah. Okay. Yes. Yes. I, 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 I'm rather confident that I've got this down pat. All right. Uh, all of the changes are on page three of the four-page document. The first change is in section two, where the word, where the phrase utility repairs will now be changed to utility work. And let me know when you're ready to move on, Madam Clerk. Okay. Second change will be in subsection H of section two. It will now simply read walking of domestic animals, comma. The entire phrase that reads within 250 feet of the animal owner's residence will be removed. So it will now simply read walking of domestic animals, comma. The third change is also in section two. Last line of text, 10 o'clock p.m. will now read 11 o'clock p.m. Finally, the last change will appear in section four, numbered section four. And here's what I have inserted. Well, um, let me just read it from the beginning. The prohibition set forth herein shall embrace all publicly owned property, comma, all public spaces, comma, and all privately owned property, parentheses, excepting the interior space of residences, close parentheses, within Manatee County, including all municipalities within the county, excepting the town of Longboat Key. So we have simply inserted a parenthetical statement, quote, accepting the interior space of residences. Okay. We have the motion, which is hopefully now clear to everybody. We have a second. I'm going to do a roll call vote again. I'm going to start with um, uh, Pr Priscilla. Yes. Reggie. Yes. Carol. Yes. Vanessa. No. Steve. No. Misty. Yes. Chair votes aye. Motion passes. Commissioner Trace. Go ahead, Commissioner Trace. Do you have something you had to add first, Bill? I just thought we need to give our interpreter a break here. Well, I think we're done, right? We're pretty much done. So these guys need a break. They're, they've been going. I was supposed to give them a break every 45 minutes, and I really screwed that up. So they're just working so hard. So we appreciate it. So be brief, OK? Priscilla? I was going to say I think we need, I would like Sherry to discuss the best way she thinks to have it where because I agree with Carol in the sense of that we do not need to just roll this over, that we, I don't want to say input because we are getting the information, but I think we need to come together more than April 30th. I would like Sherry or Jacob, whomever, to give us a good option on the way for us to communicate uh, so that, you know, we're talking a little bit more than just letting the uh, policy group turn this over. <coughs> Madam Chairman, Commissioners, um, you know, I am your employee. You have two of them, myself and Mr. Palmer, and I can certainly um, work to contact each one of you and then come up with a um, type of format that can allow us to meet 
uh, on a regular basis. Okay. All right. Well, thank you, everybody, for uh, all your hard work. You guys are probably in your, you're probably I, I, in your pajamas. I have a for that, but I would say if Sherry has not come up with some way that we can communicate and work things out, I would like to have another meeting next Friday. Yes. Thank okay. you. We will work towards that. Okay. Both of those concepts, commissioners. Okay. All right. Well, everybody, thank you for your participation. Thank you, all staff, again, for being here. Um, again, these are unprecedented times. Hopefully, we can get rid of these um, restrictions sooner rather than later. I get it. Nobody wants restrictions. I certainly don't. Um, but I'm going to do my job the best of my ability for public safety. So there you go. So thank you, everybody, and uh, stay safe. Okay. Good night. We're adjourned.